Yes, that was an excellent contest, wasn't it? And a record-breaking performance there by number eight, Dan Sale, and his first solo victory around Balloon Plain, heading into land at Ronald's Way, and the course inspection car just goes past us. So uh, next... Uh, hard to keep up here isn't it next we're going to have uh, the vintage motorcycle club isle of man section 350 classic race the uh, junior and a full grid we have in pole number three alan oversby then we have 21 richard ford and 40 barry davidson second row andy hornby number two number 84 nigel moore and number seven harley rushton Third row, number 100, Heffin Owen, number 9, Chris McGarn, and number 11, Stephen Elliott. Fourth row is Kelly Carruthers, 78, Michael Titchmarsh, and 103, Andy Hunt. And let's go back to Chris, because they are getting a rattle on here. Yeah, certainly are. It's a blue plate of machines are coming out now. It's a 350 Classic. It's the Vintage Motorcycle Club Isle of Man section. 350cc Junior Classic race. Should be an interesting one, this, I think. Alan Oversby be looking to put that disappointment down. I know he was second. He was happy with that, but he was looking for that win, trying to beat Young Yardley. He's going to run. He's just rolled that machine into his... Uh, Pole position, 46 just alongside us here now, it rattles, it actually makes your body rattle does this, that's uh, Mark Johnson from Jamal on the Trixton Honda, number 40 Barry Davison rolls his 350 into his position, oh as well turned out riders, and well turned out machines on the 7, the Craven Classic Magnus machine, that's Harley Rushton, newcomer here last year, did see uh, a previous run rider on that machine, Jamie Coward, down here last night spectating with all his family. Welcome back. Just seen uh, TT rider Gary Johnson as well. I just had a quick chat with Gary, see how he is. 42 into his position there. This is a big nod. It is so, so noisy. I've got my headphones absolutely wound to the maximum. And you're still stuck to hear yourself. You can feel your body just vibrating when you're this close to all those machines 14 Andy Green on the Classic Racing Green Honda K4 Andy Hornby though who's going to be running at number 2 he's actually changed his machine he's not riding the MV which is a shame he is on a Honda 350 K4 so number 2 Andy Hornby if he is here hopefully Andy is is riding Ah, yeah, there he is, yeah. Oh, no, it's Barry Davison, that is. OK. Double check if Andy is here. We'll see if we get down right to the front under the tree. Don't actually see Andy Hornby here. I can see uh, young Will Loader here as well. He's on the Greaves. Greaves Alter machine, the Will Loader racing machine, having that win yesterday. But, yeah, no number two at the moment. Number 103 has got a problem. He's got the starter motor here number 103 of course is Andy Hunt 13th on the 350 Ducati for him last year just got a couple more machines just coming to the back yeah he has got it fired up now which is alright number 103 which is good he'll roll into his position but no number 2 Andy Hornby the Exeter rider not here so the front row of 3 Oversby 21 Loader and 40 Davidson getting underway very shortly now I think just keeping an eye on the travel and marshals once they get themselves ready we will be starting to move so 103 pushing his bike backwards and into its position the course cars are back now as well Alan Elvisby just sits astride nice and comfortable RST leather's on away we go Richard Ford off the top step of the podium onto the 350, uh, 315 Bob Jackson Suzuki this time and he's the last machine on the road cross four ways it is, there's a warm up lap for the vintage MCC, Alaman section 350 junior classic race
Yeah, and just taking a look back through the timings, just for a bit of context here, Alan Overs beyond pole, the number three. That quickest time set in the first practice slash qualifying session for this particular class at 2 minutes 53.712. Didn't go out in the second session in this particular class. It was number 40, Barry Davidson, who is, of course, on the front row at 2.56.259. The other uh, quicker time by Will Loder, also making up the uh, three on that front row, is 2.56.228. So even the quickest ones in behind Oversby, still some three seconds, two and a half to three seconds off the pace of Oversby. So if Oversby can get a clean start in this particular race, it might uh, just find it more difficult for some of those others to catch him. Looking at some of the other ones from that uh, second qualifying session in this class, a reminder that uh, Oversby, amongst a couple of others, weren't out in that particular session. Uh, number 21, Will Loder, we've already mentioned, but number 84, Nigel Moore, was only 0.417 seconds off the pace of Loder, who went slightly slower at 257.7. Nigel Moore, 258.128. And just the other, the one other in the second session that managed to make it under the three minute mark was number seven, Harley Rushton number uh, number number seven I should say, two minutes 58.297 so uh, Harley Rushton has mentioned a newcomer last year as well and uh, a good solid placing at the moment in the midst of that second row for this 350cc junior classic race. Looking elsewhere, number 100 Heffernoen, bearing in mind if uh, Andy Hornby is indeed not on the grid to start, that might give Heffernoen a bit of tarmac to run into off the line if he gets a good start. Here comes the travelling Marshall and out front here is number three Alan Oversby on the way through a couple of seconds back number 21 Will Loader they've moved in right behind the travelling Marshall through cross four ways now here comes the real scotch of machines led by number seven Harley Rushton Heffern Owen Kelly Carruthers Barry Davidson Nigel Moore it's Michael Titchmarsh Stephen Elliott 46 through as well Mark Johnson 103 Andy Hunt as well so they've all seemed to have held back a little bit the back of that particular convoy number 28 Billy Cummins on the Honda CB K4, 14, 63 and 50, all three cross four ways, 65, 25, 92, 41 and 20. And number 12 at the back of that particular group is Richard Ford. Great running for Richard Ford, the 250cc class in that combined race that we just had as the travelling marshals go through. The course inspection car makes its way towards us on this convoy on that little bit of a sighting lap. So we saw just there on the formation lap, Alan Oversby and Will Loader looking to get right in behind the travelling marshals, whilst the other bit members of the group stayed back there. There, but it all may depend on Alan Oversby and Will Loder and Barry Davidson all trying to get themselves decent starts off the line because as we've already seen the likes of number 84 Nigel Moore and 7 Harley Rushton have been going strong back to you Tim well prepare yourselves here if you like your mass starts at the Colas Balloon course we have a full grid here all 10 rows 30 riders are ready uh, to get this uh, uh, this event underway it is the vintage MCC Isle of Man section 350cc junior classic race seven laps ahead of us blue plates with white numbers 29.75 miles of racing drama ahead and there is the man in pole number three Alan Oversby number 21 Richard Ford and uh, just waiting for number 40. Here he is, Barry Davidson, to complete that front row. No number two, as uh, Chris uh, very correctly and promptly spotted. No Andy Hornby on the second row, but we have number 84 there, and that is Nigel Moore. And we have number seven as well, and that is uh, Harley Rushton. So uh, the red flag is at the back of the grid. We wait, of course, for that to be lowered and the uh, green to go, but. Uh, number 84 is just uh, shuffling himself uh, up into position as well, but uh, he's where uh, Andy Hornby would have been, but uh, has decided I'm going to go in that spot. Nobody is uh, stopping him from that, but there's one being wheeled away from the grid, and that is number 25, Andrew Guy. So he's just been uh, wheeled off the grid and into uh, in front of us, the green flag at the back, the sign goes up, engage gear, that's flipped round, watch the lights, watch the lights. Away we go, and it's a good start from 40 and 84, but Oversby seem to be holding station. Let's go to Chris for the whole shot. Here come the blue plates with the white numbers, it's the 350s, and it's number 40, Barry Davis. <laughs> Nigel Moore, the Doug Gannon man in third. Barry Davison, 40 in second. And of course, a good set of Barry Davis leading and Alan Oversby in second. 
You actually could not hear Chris talking there, such as the noise as they actually went past him. But we got it. It was a good start by number 40, Barry Davidson. And uh, Alan Obersby then in uh, number three was the man on pole. He's the man uh, to beat as uh, the officials uh, all uh, come and a uh, disconsolate uh, rider, of course, in front of us here. Number uh, 25, Andrew Guy, our sympathies to him, thrown his gloves to the ground and uh, his helmet now and just having a little pace and uh, throwing the uh, ear protectors out not happy at all and major disappointment for him of course uh, having come here uh, to race and he's just uh, walking off uh, just to the top end of the uh, holding area by the uh, gate for the uh, railway line and uh, yeah, just gathering his thoughts and uh, composing himself, but understandably uh, completely uh, distraught at having not been able to start that race. Andrew Guy, number 25, an official retirement, and his bike is here in front of us. Let's go out to cross four ways and Rob Pritchard. Yeah, we wondered, didn't we, who'd get the best start off the line? And uh, by the sounds of it, Chris Kinney mentioning Barry Davidson in there and Nigel Moore in and around Alan Oversby, the uh, pole sitter from that starting line. But who's made the ground? Who's made the progress as we get up to cross four ways here? Three machines, four machines interviewing at the head of them is number three, Alan Oversby. And up into second is number seven, Harley Rushton. And number 84, Nigel Moore. Number 21, Will Loder. Those four goes together. Stephen Elliott, Heffern Owen, Michael Tinsford. 16, Kelly Carruthers as well. 103, Andy Hunt, 42, 46 and 86 on the way through. 88, 104 and 50. Now number 92 there, that's Steve Walsh ahead of 72 and 63. So Shelley Dyke and Angela Bragg close together through cross four ways. Groups of uh, five, six or seven through cross four ways. But uh, first lap of cross four ways, Alan Overs the easy taking the lead. But number seven, Harley Rushton up into second on this opening lap ahead of number 84, Nigel Moore. So it's all changed on the way through cross four ways on this opening lap. Alan Oversby taking back that top spot here on the run from that uh, start finish line. Bala Kagan all the way through Bala Wetzland and up towards us. And Harley Rushton clearly making up some ground in those undulating, sweeping turns on the way from Bala Beg right through to us. And Nigel Moore, number 84 as well, starting on the second row, right in the mix at the moment. Back to Tim. Yeah, we're seeing riders crossing over the bridge. Two together, three behind as well, and it is Oversby has the lead. Oversby from Rushton, from Loder, from Moore. Oh, great move by Heaven Owen, number 100 as well, getting himself up into seventh position. We'll just let you listen as uh, four more machines come into view. And a further five. Let's have a listen. And a retirement towards the uh, back there. Uh, number 28 it was. Billy Cummins, I think, there uh, just retiring. So let's uh, just put some meat on the bones of that little lot. Uh, so in uh, pole pos uh, leading is, of course, uh, Alan Oversby uh, in... I can tell you in fifth place is number 11 because the screen has just gone down a little further. Uh, fifth is number 11, Stephen Elliott. Sixth, number 78, Michael Titchmarsh. Seventh, number 100, Heffin Owen, who did that overtake uh, on the line. Eighth is number 16, Kelly Carruthers. In ninth is number 103, and that is Andy Hunt. In tenth is number 42, Stephen Moody. Eleventh, Mark Johnson, number 46. And twelfth, the newcomer, Kyle Parks, number 86. But it's Oversby from Rushton. It's half a second, 0 0.548 is the margin. In third is number 21, Will Lodo, who's less than a second behind Rushton. Os Oversby leads, let's go to cross four ways and Rob. Indeed he does, and we're just waiting to see if that is remains the case on this second lap here, coming to cross four ways. Two, three machines emerging here, three of them side by side going in. It's number 21, Will Loader ahead of number seven, Harley Rushman. And number three, Alan Oversby, great stuff through cross four ways. And number 84, Nigel Moore, all change here in cross four ways. Will Loader takes the lead ahead of Rushton, ahead of Oversby. Here's Titch Marsh now ahead, the group of four, Carruthers, Elliott, Owen. Andy Hunt, number 42, Stephen Moody as well. It's all action here at the front of the order here in this race. Number 46 on the way through. That's Mark Johnson as well, through cross four ways and up toward church bench. Number 86 through as well. The newcomer, Carl Parks, going steady at the moment. 104, that's Leon Murphy in there. 88, 50 and 72. 
But what racing we had through cross four ways there. Number 21, Will Loader, just a whisker ahead of number seven, Harley Rushton. And in turn, Alan Overs be practically right next to him. Brilliant stuff. There's four more machines through cross four ways. At the back of that, number 41, that's Andy Kilday. Great racing at the moment, in and around, not just those top three, but looking forward to the top ten as well. You really cannot call it in these early stages. Seven laps in total, back to Tim. Yeah, gaggle across the bridge to see them emerge. Three together across the rise there, and it's 21, 3, 7, 84. It's a load of leads from Oversby, from Rushton, from Moore, and uh, five, six, seven more emerge. 78, 16, 11, 100, 103, 42, as quick as that. And then one on its own. <laughs> Number 46, Mark Johnson. He's in 11th place. 11 machines, as quickly as that. Past us on the start-finish line. 86 crosses the line. That's Carl Parks. 104, Leon Murphy crosses the line. There's 88, Rob Lowe, 50, Dave Glover, 72, Shelley Pike, 63, Angela Cragg. But it is Will Loader, number 21, 0.458 of a second ahead of number three, Alan Oversby, in third place. And there's, there's brilliant action right the way through this field in this uh, stunning junior race. And that we're only two laps of seven into it as well at the moment. So Rushton in third, 84, Nigel Moore is in fourth, and he's only two and a half seconds behind the leader. Then there's a bit of a gap of around eight and a half seconds to fifth place, 78, Michael Titchmarsh. But there's nothing between them all the way down to 10th then. Six, it's number 16, Kelly Carruthers. Seventh, number 11, Stephen Elliott. Eighth, number 100, Heffin Owen. Ninth, number 103, Andy Hunt. And 10th, number 42, Stephen Moody. So it is Loader by less than half a second ahead of Oversby and Rushton. What drama. Let's go to cross four ways. Good luck with this, Rob. I know you can't just not call the podium. You can't even call anything around the top 10 at the moment, such as how close everything is. Two more machines making a break in a third as well. Number 21, Will Loader ahead of number seven, Harley Rushton. Now just a couple of bike lengths back is number 84, Nigel Moore. So Nigel Moore up into third place here and leading is number 21, Will Loader from number seven, Harley Rushton. And number 84, Nigel Moore. Four more machines here. 100, Heffern Owen, Kelly Carruthers, Stephen Elliott, Michael Titchmarsh, number 103, Andy Hunt as well. So it's change in the top three as it stands, but we'll load the leads again through cross four ways. Number 46 on the way through. A bit of a lonely race at the moment for number 46. Mark Johnson on the Drixton Honda as he goes through. So we'll load the leads across four ways again. Here's numbers 86 and 104. 104 just going through the inside line here ahead of the newcomer, number 86. Carl Parks here. Number 88 on the way through as well is Rob Lowe. Number 50 in there. That is Dave Glover. 63 and 72. That's Angela Craig and Shelley Pike moving up the inside ahead of Craig here across four ways as well. Number 92, Stephen Walsh on the way through, but it's changed at the front, Tim. Back to you. It's very close as they came around Castletown Corner. Two have just got ahead, though, and there's an overtake move on. Number 21 just ahead of seven and 84. So uh, no Alan Oversby so far here, but 21, uh, Will Loader just got ahead of number seven, Harley Rushton, who obviously had the lead coming in. And here's five interview. And the last of those is number 78, who is indicating he's retiring. 78, Michael Titchmarsh is uh, retiring. So it is Will Loader by 0.151 of a second ahead of number seven, Harley Rushton. And Loader managed to get ahead uh, just as they crossed the uh, finish line here. So uh, more bikes coming into view. 104 now is through. And he's in 10th position. That's Leon Murphy. So sixth is number 11, Stephen Elliott. Seventh, 103, Andy Hunt. Eighth, number six. Oh, great drama all the way down. Uh, eighth is number 78, Michael Titchmarsh. Ninth, number 46, Mark Johnson. Tenth, number 104, Leon Murphy. Then it's uh, Rob Lowe, number 88. 50, Dave Glover. 72, Shelley Pike. 
63 Angela Cragg, 92 Stephen Walsh, 20 Gary Hutton, 65 Loris Hunt, and in 18th number 41, Andy Kilday. But it's Loader by 0.151 of a second ahead of Harley Rushton. And uh, the quickest lap of the race so far is for Loader at 86.602 miles per hour. But it looks like Oversby has gone from this race. Loader and Rushton are the front two. Let's go to cross four ways and Rob Pritchard. Yeah, we've still got four more laps of this to enjoy, haven't we, Tim? Yep, yeah, didn't see Alan Oversby arrive at cross four ways, so may indeed be a bit of a mechanical issue. Three machines coming forward here. Here's number 21, Will Loader, leading again at cross four ways. Number seven, Harley Rushton, right on his tail. Number 84, Nigel Moore, who's moved up the inside there. Has he held it on the exit? Loader still leads here. Let's have a look. Looks like Nigel Moore. They're side by side. Moore and Rushton there. Great stuff on the exit across four ways. Three more machines into view here. Four more, in fact. 100 Heffernow and follow by number 103 Andy Hunt, number 11 Stephen Illin and number 16 Kelly Carruthers as well great four way battle going on through cross four ways and on the way to Church Bend so number 21 Will Loader leads again at cross four ways ahead of number 7 Harley Rushton as they enter the corner but Nigel Moore moving up the inside and the two were practically side by side on the exit across four ways here's number 46 and still going steady at the moment is Mark Johnson on the Drixton Honda and then a massive gap opening up to the uh, machines further back. So the field starting to just thin out a little bit at the moment as number 104, Leon Murphy, makes his way into cross four ways as well. And another one dropping into the distance as well. But Will Loader, as we mentioned, leading through cross four ways. Great right, Tim, Rob Lowe is through as well. Back to you, Tim. Unless they were side by side, we might have a bike that's just got a little bit of an advantage. Indeed, we do. And it's 21 from 84. From seven, so Nigel Moore has moved up into second place. One and a half seconds is the difference between our leader, Loader, and uh, number 21, Loader, and 84 Moore. And now there's three together, four together. So, 103 Andy Hunt is in fourth, up into fourth as well. Fifth, number 100 Heffin Owen. Sixth, number 11 Stephen Elliott. And in seventh, number 16 Kelly Carruthers. So, Loader leads more by one and a half seconds. And that's the biggest gap we've seen so far in this race. In eighth place and moving up is number 46 Mark Johnston. And more bikes now moving uh, into our view. We're not going to see them because I think there's a steam engine just about to go under the railway bridge. But uh, that is uh, in ninth place, number 104, Leon Murphy. Here's number 88. And uh, overtake potentially from 72's Shelley uh, Pike on uh, number 63, Angela Cragg. The two uh, women having a great little battle around here uh, further down the field in the sort of mid-order section. Dave Glover on the tail end of that in 13th, number 50. 92, 20, 65 and 41 cross the line. But at the end of lap four of seven, it is Will Loder who leads for the quickest lap by Nigel Moore, who's up into second ahead of Rushton. Let's go to Robert Cross Four Ways. Yeah, waiting on the top three, but you mentioned there number 103, Andy Hunt as well. He was down in ninth at the end of the first and second lap as well. So that's some serious ground made up. Here come your leading riders. Number 21, Will Loader, still just pulling out a little bit of a gap across four ways. Number 84, Nigel Moore staying in front of number seven. Harley Rushton there on that uh, Craven Classic machine as well. So Will Loader leads again through cross four ways. And number 84, Nigel Moore, after uh, challenging with Harley Rushton through cross four ways last time, just seems to have pulled out a tiny little bit of a gap. Number 100, Heffern Owen up into uh, fourth place here, ahead of Andy Hunt and then Stephen Elliott. Number 16, Kelly Carruthers. What does it look like on the exit here? Looks like Heffern Owen's held it as well. So Heffern Owen back up into fourth place, ahead of number 103, Andy Hunt across four ways, but in very close attendance there. Number 11, Stephen Elliott, and number 16, Kelly Carruthers as well. So Will Loader first through cross four ways, ahead of number 84, Nigel Moore, and then it was number seven. Harley Rushton, here's number uh, 46, Mark Johnson on the way through, still running in eighth at the moment, but uh, Andy Hunt, as we mentioned, who was uh, up into fourth, down to fifth. Back to you, Tim. Yep, has Loader just got a little bit more of a gap. It was uh, one and a half seconds at the end of the last lap, 21 across the line. There's 84, and there's seven, so it is 2.38 
zero. The gap now between our leader, number 21, Will Loader, and second place, number 84, Nigel Moore. And then there's uh, about 1.7 the margin until we get uh, in... Oh, great battles going on there. Heffin Owen has moved up into fourth place ahead of Andy Hunt and Stephen Elliott and Kelly Carruthers sixth and seventh. So Harley Rushton is in third. Nigel Moore has put in his quickest lap there at 85.930. Still quickest was lap two for Will Loader, our leader, at 86.602 uh, miles per hour. So 21 from 84 from seven. Then up into fourth now is number 100, Heffin Owen. In fifth, there's 103, Andy Hunt. Sixth, number 11, Stephen Elliott. Seventh, number 16, Kelly Carruthers. Eighth is number 46, Mark Johnson. Here's the man in ninth then. 104 crosses the line. That's Leon Murphy. Just getting a little bit more strung out now as we've completed five laps of the seven. There's 88, and here is 72 and 63 again, having a great battle. And Shelley Pike gets ahead this time of number 63, Angela Cragg. And 88 is in 10th, that's Rob Lowe. 13th just through number 50, Dave Glover. But it's Loader by 2.3 from Moore. Let's go to cross four ways. Rob. Yeah, still all changed, not just in that top three, but inside that top ten as well. Although, as you mentioned, the field is starting to thin out a little bit more. It can still be anyone's guess. Here's number 21, Will Loader, and it's a much bigger gap now that he's got going into cross four ways on this uh, penultimate lap from number 84, Nigel Moore, who in turn has also just opened up a little bit of ground ahead of number seven, Harley Rushton. So that leading trio of machines through cross four ways, a bit more spread out. Will Loader just extending his advantage from number 84, Nigel Moore in second, who in turn has just opened up a little bit of ground on the run to Cross four ways from number seven, Harley Rushton. Three more machines coming through here, led by number 100, Heffano, and ahead number 103, Andy Hunt, and number 11, Stephen Elliott. A great three-way battle still going there. There's number 16, Kelly Carruthers, just dropping off a little bit from that particular gaggle of machines, heading through. He's through cross four ways and on the way up toward Church Benz there. So there's a great... Uh, Dueling going on between the likes of 100 Heffern Owen and number 103 Andy Hunt there. Heffern Owen still ahead of Hunt, who in turn is just ahead of Stephen Elliott, who's certainly keeping them honest on the way through there. Maybe waiting to pounce if the opportunity arises. Number 16, Kelly Carruthers, just dropping a little bit back from that group. But it is Will Loader from Nigel Moore from Harley Rushton. To you, Tim. Yeah, it looks like, uh, just judging by the bridge there, that Loader has extended his lead and he's the only man in sight so far. 21, Loader across the line. Fastest lap of 87.082 and he's 4.4 seconds ahead now of 84, Nigel Moore. There's number seven, the man in third, Harley Rushton, and he is around another four, five seconds back on Moore. So Loder is extending his lead and he's put his quickest lap in, 87.082, but Moore was quickest for him personally. It's, the battles continue down the field, 86.076 there uh, for Nigel Moore. Uh, the lack of adhesion flag where uh, no that is in fact the last lap flag that is uh, out so they are on their last lap uh, that they are being uh, uh, given there that of course is the yellow flag with the uh, uh, the uh, black diagonal uh, lines on it so it's lap six completed they're on their final lap loader is establishing a lead it's 4.433 seconds ahead of more 21 from 84 then in fourth it's 103 has moved up into fourth andy hunt fifth 100 heffin owen sixth number 11 stephen elliott seventh number 16 kelly carruthers eighth is number 46 mark johnson and here's our man in ninth number 104 that's leon murphy Definitely beginning to string out a little bit more as uh, the pace of this race has been unrelenting. But there's battles all the way down. Here's three together. 88, 72 and 63. But let's go to Robert Cross four ways. Yeah, you mentioned that battle for 10th there that Rob Lowe currently has number 88, but we saw it through cross four ways before as the uh, race leaders were coming across the line there. That Shelley Pike, number 72, and Angela Craig, number 63, had closed the gap there. Here's your race leader, Will Loader, on this last lap into cross four ways. Still got that nice big gap to this man, number 84, Nigel Moore, who's looking very uh, assured indeed in second place at the moment. The gap is much larger, though. 
to the man in third here, number seven, Harley rushed in into cross four ways, Nigel Moore's extended that gap, doesn't look like he's going to catch number 21, Will Loader at the front, Nigel Moore, but he's kept opening up that advantage to number seven, Harley Rushton is running well, ahead of the battle for fourth here, here's number 100, Heffern Owen right on his coattails, number 103, Andy Hunter just a few bike lengths back, number 11, Stephen Elliott, what's it looking like on the exit here, Heffern Owen looks to have still held it, but Andy Hunt's closing in, 11 Stephen Elliott as well as number 16 Kelly Carruthers comes through still just a little bit back from that trio so it's as you were on this final lap number 21 Will Loader with a sizable margin of uh, distance ahead to number 84 Nigel Moore in second and another bigger gap between Moore and number 7 Harley Rushton as well it's that battle for fourth that's still looking interesting back to you Tim yeah we've got uh, potentially our leader and winner for the second time this week 21 crosses the line to take his second win of the week, sees the chequered flag once again. Will Loader is the winner by 4.66 seconds ahead of number 84. Nigel Moore in second. Great ride from Nigel. And here's the man in third, bike number seven, Harley Rushton. Will Loader, two wins now around at this meeting and two wins in the week. Chris Kinley. Yeah, absolutely elated. The official Sub London photographer just got an absolutely great shot of him coming in and just throwing his hands in the air, just loving it. Well done to Harley as a newcomer here last year, getting himself his first podium on the Craven Classic machine. Yes, he's happy as well. Will Lodring gets a tap on the back from Nigel Moore. We'll let Will take his time on this one. All the rest of the machines coming in in the background. Family's all there happy, anyway. yeah, they're happy, that's good to see. Well, just like a bus, they come along twice. Will, congratulations, that fantastic. Oh man, I'm so happy. Who says you can't win the 350 race outright on a single cylinder bike? No, bonkers, isn't it? Oh man. Talk us through it. Oh, I just tried to get off the line and not lose too many places because the K4s just disappear off the line. And then the first lap Harley did was unreal. He was so fast, I wasn't expecting him to be there. And then, uh, yeah, I just kind of got past Harley, got past Alan, saw Harley a few times and just tried to keep my head down and, and get to the end. And this old guy behind you, Nigel, he was after you. He's not shy on a, on, on, a, on a classic bike, is he, Nigel Moore? Oh, yeah, I had some race with Nigel Moore last year. I wanted to get away from him as fast <laughs> as I could. <laughs> talk, us about, talk us about the bike that you said about the bike you won on yesterday. Was this another one of the bikes that your dad tr tried to win around here? Or was this a different bike? Same bike. Same bike, yeah. Same bike, yeah. yeah. I mean, so... My dad and my uncle Pete started developing it in 1989 and like, we've just kind of carried on ever since. It was my dad's dream to win races on a Greaves with its weird front end and its yeah, yeah. strange frame and everything else. And we've, we've, got, we've got two and like, I can't believe it. I'm just so happy. <laughs> Party tonight then? Yeah, yeah. Big, well, a try. Got a little boy, so we have to get to bed early, don't we? No, you don't. Just pass it on. Just, you know, just say, I'm going for a beer, love. <laughs> try, try that one. I'll let you see, see how long that lasts. I don't, I don't think going for a beer love's an acceptable <laughs> excuse after Alison's been chasing Zach around the paddock for the last four days. It's worth it all, all the time, all the effort in the garage over the winter. Two wins at Balan so far. Yeah, just like massive thanks to everyone who helps me and Dave, Dave who's come over here and helped me with Rianne and Alison who puts up with me and Martin from Innovation who helps me with the, the 500 and, you know, I've got a, an, an awesome bikes at the moment and... I'm starting to get some good results on them, I think. You certainly are. Well done. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody. Well done. Cheers. Uh, Nigel Moore, we'll get in a minute. Harley here, newcomer last year. He said you were uh, this McRaven machine was quite flying well. We know how quick it is. Obviously, you were here as a newcomer last year. First time on the podium. Harley, well done. Yeah, I came here with the uh, ambition to try and get the podium this year, but I mean, I didn't think it was actually going to happen. <laughs> I, when I was leading the race at one point, I thought this this just isn't real, to be honest, in my second year here. But the bike was absolutely flying today. I just uh, just had a little bit of, of an oil leak, misting all over my foot and onto the rear tyre from about lap four onwards. So I just had to roll it off a little bit and try and conserve that podium position rather than end up in one of the dry stone walls. <laughs> and you got a lot of experience following people like Will and following people like Nigel Moore, so probably learned a bit as well. Yeah, I definitely learnt a load from riding with them too. It was uh, us three last year that were having a bit of a battle in the newcomer year, but they've they've stepped their game up again this year, so it was hard work to try and stay with them. But uh, massive thank you to uh, Ted Wolf and Ron helping out span of the bike. They worked tirelessly all weekend to try and get the bikes uh, ready to go, and it performed brilliantly today. I can't fault it. Well done, Holly. Thank you. Thank you, bud. Cheers. And uh, this will be a quick interview, I think, with Nigel. Here we go. We'll try it anyway. Young Nigel. 
How are you, boy? It's all right. How did, good crack? Oh, aye, it's brilliant. You and uh, Young Will having a battle? I well, caught them up there a wee bit. And then, uh, next thing, uh, Young Boy, he broke down. or Alan Ovis, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I thought I could get this young boy here, but then he speeded up. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was worried about the, you know, the, the K4s of just a bit more top end. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's much in them. I don't think in them at all. It's just he was just riding a bit better. Well, you're riding well yourself. Still going? I was over the moon about this place and here because I didn't feel good in the 500. Now once I got in this here, I feel brilliant. What's next for you after this, Armoy? Is it on the Irish scene? Why are my road race and then the Manx? Maybe Manx, yeah, already. Hey, yeah. well done, Nigel. Thank you, thank you, buddy. Cheers. There we go. So there's the front three or the top three. Uh, Rupert Murden from the Vintage Motorcycle Club, Alaman section. They're going to do the presentation. Rupert, thank you very much for that, ladies and gentlemen. In third place, newcomer last year's first podium here, number seven, Harley Rushton. This side, Rupe, Rupe, Rupe. There you go. This side, third place. Well done, Harley. Well done, buddy. Second place, good to see him back up on the podium. Number 84 is Nigel Moore. And his second win of the week on the Greaves. Two out of two for him. Number 21, Will Loder. Well done to Will. And the Foranger Vintners sparkling wine gets handed over to the... To the, to the first, second and third. So once again, folks, let's give them a round of applause. Harley Rushton, well done to him. Well done to Nigel Moore and also to our race winner, Will Loder. Well done, guys. The top three in the race there, sponsored by the Vintage Motorcycle Club, the Isle of Man section of 350s. The next race on the card is the Blackford Consolation Race. Let's head to Tim for that. Yeah, and we'll start to uh, give you the uh, grid on this one. It's a mixture of machinery in here. And the consolation races uh, for those that obviously haven't qualified for the uh, main races. So uh, we could have anything in here. You could have a 350 class, the blue plates, the 500 class, the yellow plates, junior superbike, the orange plates, the senior superbike, the white plates, or indeed uh, the 1100cc class. And again, they are the uh, white plates as well. So, uh, I can tell you in pole, we've got number 31. And number 31 is Colin Croft. Joining him on the front row will be number 27, John Cliff. And number 99, Sam Norton. Second row is number 88, that's Rob Lowe. Number 81, Blake Kelly. And number 22, Rod Graham. Third row is number 94, Adam Randalls. Number 82, Stevan Radakovich. And number 36, Andrew Jessup. The fourth row is number 43, Dale Brew. Number 20, Guy Hutton. And number 66, Robert Noyle. Fifth row is number 17, Owen Monaghan. 62, Carl Fox. And 64 is Paul McMahon. 77 is on row 6, Neil Champion. 45, Steve Higgerty. And number 12, Richard Ford. And then the seventh row is the final row for this grid. Number 105, Mick Morton. Number 60, Stuart Robinson. And number 93, Gary Abbott. So it is the uh, Blackford Consolation Race. Six laps here. 25.5 miles and the race uh, as the description in the program says and do buy a copy of the program it does uh, uh, the provide you with a, a memento as well uh, but it also is uh, just uh, helping the club out as well in putting the meetings on uh, the race is made up by the riders who qualified but did not get a start in the junior and senior classic races and uh, the full list of all the competitors, vast majority have been in their particular race, who will not be participating in this race. So if you didn't qualify for those two main races, you have the option of running one of your bikes in your stable in this one. So it's, a, it's always an unknown, this race, but we've had some absolute belters over the years, and let's hope uh, we're going to keep in uh, that sort of tone this afternoon. I can tell you now the roads are pretty much dry down here, 
and uh, I can report the odd little patch of blue sky up there and it's considerably brighter than it's been all day so the conditions getting better and better as we uh, reach towards the climax of this race there's just one more to go uh, after uh, there's two more I should say to go after this because uh, we will have the post classic super bikes next uh, that's over seven laps that was due away at four and this race, the consolation was due away at 3.20. And bear in mind, it's just past half past three now. That shows you how uh, well the club have done and the organisers to uh, get back on schedule after squeezing in an extra race here for the sidecars to make up for the disappointment that they suffered last night uh, when we did have some, uh, well, some really, really heavy downpours and uh, the light was going and time was ticking away as well before the roads had to be reopened by nine o'clock and they only really had 20 minutes uh, to get that race in it wasn't really viable and they quite rightly took the decision to uh, postpone it which was good rather than cancel it and they've managed to accommodate it in at the start of proceedings today and they will end proceedings today with their second race so well done one and all so we are ready then for uh, the consolation race and uh, we'll go to uh, Rob Pritchard uh, out at Cross Four Ways. And uh, we've had some idea of what we we're about to see in uh, all the other races. But this one, this is a bit of a lottery. It is indeed, isn't it? We've seen it in the last uh, couple of years. And one of the reasons that they've had this consolation race in is because of the sheer number of entries and demand they've had uh, across a lot of the solo classes as well. And it seems to be a really nice touch by the uh, the organisers and uh, just to give them a chance because you've got to remember that these riders, even though they haven't qualified for the likes of the, uh, uh, the junior and senior races, for example, they'll have just put in as much time and effort as anyone else in that Balloon Course paddock as well. It is going to be a real mix because you'd imagine on these uh, longer sweeping sections you're going to get the likes of those uh, those senior superbikes and those 1100 cc machines that might just have the straight line grunt but as we've already seen the pace that some of these 350s can have particularly in these tight turns here at the likes of cross four ways out at uh, Balabeg as well and uh, coming over the uh, back onto the start finish line across that bridge heading towards the uh, the start finish straight so you do get a bit of a, an eclectic mix and it also as, as goes with classic racing it depends uh, how well it's set up as well so it really is indeed, Tim. That is the perfect word to describe it. Uh, a lottery in there as well. And it just gives another chance as well for some of those newcomers out there to get another bit of uh, a run out here towards the end of the meeting there. And just looking at a few of them, you've got number 99, uh, Sam Norton there, who was running well during practice as well. You've got the likes of number 94, Adam Randalls, in on the third row there, alongside uh, Stevan Radakovic, another newcomer, number 82 there as well looking a bit further uh, up the field as well and uh, there's a lot of names in there that will just get that extra chance it'll be interesting to see uh, who, who gets some form of uh, supremacy out there it's an extremely difficult one to call and over six laps as well uh, reliability always uh, comes into it in some form or another for some riders here in classic racing as well so yes very difficult to call here and uh, we look forward to getting this consolation race started back to you yes thank you and uh, for the first time this afternoon there's not quite that urgency that we had i mean there was very little it was like bang 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 get the races in but it's just a little bit of a breather uh, as uh, they've uh, got the time now the roads uh, can stay closed until uh, six o'clock and we're what 25 to four we're coming up to now and there's this consolation race to come then we will have the uh, the big, big ones, the post-classic superbikes, the oogly-sponsored race over seven laps. This consolation is over six. And then we'll have the final race, race nine, uh, to wind things up, the three-wheeling sidecar race two over four laps. But let's uh, go to Chris Kinney because uh, despite the fact we've just had a little bit of a pause, and it's only been a pause, I think we're about to get rocking once again. Let's go to Chris Kinley. Yeah, we certainly are. Machines are being brought forward to their grid positions. Adam Randalls goes past us in his VFR 400 Honda. Also 43. John Cliff as well. Thank you, John. Cheers. Ooh. Colin Croft goes past as well. There we go, number 43. Dale Brew on the 250. Well, let's put it this way. I'm stood next to a VFR 400 Honda, a ZXR 750 Kawasaki, <laughs> a 
500 Manx Norton and a 250TZ Yamaha, such as the uh, the different sort of machines in here as well. 64 just gives a thumbs up as well, Paul McMahon, newcomer here this year. Looking forward to this, he's on his 350 Honda. But at the front will be, I think it's Colin Croft that's on pole position, it is number 31. So Crofty can bring that ZXR home. John Cliff's next to him, number 21. Beg your pardon. 27, John Cliff. And they got also 99 that completes that front row. That's Sam Norton. So we're not too far away from getting the gate open. But the gate is now being opened, and I think we are just about to have machines on the circuit. Here we go. He just rolling past us there now as well, Stuart Robinson. Such a different sort of machine. They're going to be such different speeds as well through various corners as well. But here we go. Mick Morton just struggling just to get the pattern fired up. Hopefully he'll get that fired up at the able assistance of uh, Wheelie Connie. There, old Connie's here, the German chap with all the badges. Hopefully they will get that fired up and hopefully Mick will be able to make the start on that 105 machine. 500cc pattern that he's got. Maybe going to try and push it, possibly. Oh, well, anyway, no time to muck around and wait for that. They're just getting it back onto the rollers there now. Let's head to cross four ways for the Constellation Race. Open uh, warm-up lap. Yeah, we're going to hear so many different uh, engine tones, so many different smells coming through uh, cross four ways. I certainly, I think it was in that uh, uh, 350cc race, uh, the one that Will Loader won just before as well. We just got this huge whiff of those <laughs> nostalgic smells that you just don't get these days on the way through. We could just about hear them in the distance, so they'll be making their way through that rather shrouded area under the trees at uh, Ballow Weston, down into the dip in front of us, and then it'll be interesting to see once the racing does get underway. As I've mentioned a couple of times, the race lines they take through here at uh, cross four ways there's plenty of opportunities for those riders to try and make their move into this tight right hander and then on the run up towards uh, church bends as well as tim's already alluded to down on the uh, start finish line we've seen uh, the track itself out here on the way towards us drying out nicely as the session has worn on but uh, as we've already mentioned again a few times there is of course that sheltered tree section on the exit across four ways can't quite see from my vantage point over the stone wall on the uh, far side uh, about a uh, about 50 metres or so away from me so it'll be uh, something that the riders will continue to have to navigate in this solos race we could just hear the noise building a little bit more and we can just see the travelling marshal there leading the first two machines who were just uh, right in behind the travelling marshal there on the way through uh, cross four ways Marshall there just signalling on the uh, speed there. There's number 31, Colin Croft. He'll start on the front row, 27 and 99. That is your front three, number 81. Another one of the newcomers in there is uh, Blake Kelly. Number 43, 36 and 88 through cross four ways as well. So that's Rob Lowe. Number 20 on the way through there are one of the yellow plated machines. That's Gary Hutton, 62, 22. 64 on the blue plate there is another newcomer, Paul McMahon, number 25. Uh, Andrew Guy on the way through on that uh, blue plated machine. Obviously frustration, the previous race didn't get off the start line. Number 60 there on the way through cross four ways, Stuart Robinson catching up with the group in front as well. So a uh, big gap between those machines that have made their way through here and uh, just listen to that number 60 machine. Maybe a bit of a mechanical gubbins going on. Doesn't quite sound too healthy at the moment, that uh, machine of uh, Stuart Robinson there, but still moving on the way toward Church Bends. We've also got uh, another machine making uh, its way towards us quite slowly here at uh, Cross Four Ways, so maybe some more... Uh, technical gubbins going on in this particular machine that's number 66 uh, Robert Noyle as well might be able to hear this he looks like he's signaling to come in here at cross four ways so maybe just a, a little bit of an issue with that yellow plated machine Robert Noyle yeah he's potting over across four ways but they're heading back towards the start finish line and into the eyes of Tim Glover yeah that bike of Robert Noyle didn't sound right did it and uh, the traveling marshal just uh, comes over school hill on the downward little run to the uh, finish line here, or the start line that we're going to see here, the red flag right on the middle of the start line just to uh, indicate they're going to stop. The travelling marshal will pass just on the uh, left-hand side of the road. And uh, number 31, Colin Croft, makes his way into pole position. He's uh, got the red plates with the white numbers, as, as has number 27 in the middle of the front row, John Cliff. 
but number 99, Sam Norton, has the orange plate. So uh, the grid beginning to form. Just one uh, coming into view at the very back now, coming trundling down School Hill uh, to take his place. And everything looks calm, but it won't be in a few seconds' time when we get this uh, Blackford Consolation race underway. And uh, I think they're just waiting and looking up the road, and we did hear uh, there was a bike uh, quite late away from uh, the, uh, st the holding area at the grid and the hand up from one of the riders at the back. I think he's uh, just through cross four ways, we believe, is uh, that final machine. But uh, are they going to wait for him to make it uh, all the way here? Certainly they're uh, looking up uh, the road still, awaiting one machine. Uh, to make its way to the grid and uh, couldn't see who it was potentially probably uh, 77 Neil Champion just uh, was uh, adjusting uh, his position on the grid I think he just got the wrong uh, position and was then told uh, you need to go back one actually and uh, so there's a it's 105 is the bike that we're waiting for that's Mick Morton on the yellow plates 105 so we'll look up that railway line and see if we can spot him on the grid but uh, the uh, rest of the riders will uh, be a little bit anxious here and I can see a machine now and the final two travelling marshals so uh, 105 uh, Mick Morton will be uh, onto the grid very shortly and we will be able to uh, get underway. I don't think it'll be too popular this uh, rider with the rest of the grid because uh, they're wanting to get underway and the nerves will be jangling but 105 is with us and he'll be on row 7 on the uh, inside, the left hand side and now uh, the red flag at the back is raised, the travelling marshals and the course car at the back on the top of the hill, just making sure the green flag's up, engage the gears, you'll hear the revs mount, watching for the lights, watching for the lights, who's going to get the whole shot, good start by number 27 in the middle of the front row, John Cliff, let's go to Chris Kinley. Yeah, John's got a pretty good start, but Crofty's got it. 31 from 27, from 99, from 88, from 43 and 22. They be the leaders here, and there we go. And 105 has got away. He's at the back there, Big Morton. But a good start by John Clift, a good start by Colin Croft. So it's 31 from 27, from 99. Thank you, Chris. Yes, uh, thunderous start it was. And just while we've got the opportunity, we have had a message in from the Chief Marshal, uh, Dewan Crawley, and he's asked that we can broadcast this a little bit later in the afternoon, which we'll do now. Uh, thanks to the marshals, uh, the radio operators, the medics, and the Whistle Stop coffee shop in Port Erin, who provided the marshals lunches. So glad to put that out for the Orange Army, and many thanks to all the marshals. Uh, then a message from the Chief Marshal there, a note of thanks to all of help the marshals. Uh, they, I bet they're a bit relieved today because it'll be a, a little bit uh, drier than maybe they were expecting uh, on a race uh, afternoon because the forecast did seem to indicate yesterday when we were looking at it that it could be a, a pretty wet affair here. But it, uh, it was a nuisance rain more than uh, really meaningful rain that we had last night. Uh, and the roads are now drying, as Rob quite rightly has said. We're not quite sure. There's probably still a few damp patches under the trees, but... My word, the weather gods are so far with us. Let's go to Rob Pritchard at Cross Four Ways. Yeah, waiting for the machines to make it through on this first lap of this Blackford Consolation race. Heard from Chris there that it was a positive start for number 31, Colin Croft, and number 27, John Cliff as well. So here we are, first machine into the mix here at Cross Four Ways. It is number 31, Colin Croft, who's opened up a bit of a gap to the next two machines coming through. Number 27, John Cliff, and number 99, the newcomer, Sam Norton as well. There's your top three on the way through, followed a couple of seconds back by number 88, Rob Lowe. So it is Colin Croft leading through Cross Four Ways. Number 22 is on the way through so that is Rod Graham 81 43 25 94 82 20 and 36 in that order only time for numbers there there's number 64 another of the newcomers Paul McMahon through cross four ways as well so number 31 Colin Croft after a positive start there opening up a couple of seconds advantage over number 27 John Cliff who had number 99 Sam Norton right in behind him there so that could be an interesting race as it develops as well two of the other machines here number 60 Stuart Robinson we mentioned it was sounding uh, a little bit uh, below par possibly that machine but he is going around number 60 Stuart Robinson as number 105 Mick Morton as well so they are circulating on this first lap 
which is good to see on those particular machines. Back to you, Tim. So is it going to be Colin Croft number 31 that we're going to see in the lead? It is the uh, yellow fared bike, of course, there of 31, Colin Croft. And here's second and third. And it's 99, Sam Norton, the newcomer who's into second. 5.9 seconds back on the leader, Croft. Uh, and he's only 0.4 ahead of him. Third, 27, John Cliff. Fourth is number 88, Rob Lowe. Fifth, number 22, Rod Graham. Sixth, number 81, Blake Kelly. Great action there between in seventh, number 25, Andrew Guy, and in eighth, number 43, the newcomer, Dale Brew. Ninth, number 82, Stevan Radakovic. Tenth is number 20, Gary Hutton. Eleventh, number 36, that's Andrew Jessup. Twelfth, number 94, another newcomer, Adam Randalls. And in thirteenth, number 64, uh, that is Paul uh, McMahon. So it is 31, Colin Croft, commanding advantage after one lap only of 5.9 seconds. Next interview is 105 in 14th, that's Mick Morton. And there is number 60 at the uh, back of the field, that is uh, number 60, Stuart Robinson in 15th. But it is Colin Croft by 5.9 seconds, number 31 from number 99, the newcomer Sam Norton. And in third place, number 27, John Cliff. Then it's Lowe, Graham, Kelly, Guy, Brew, Radakovich, Hutton, Jessup, Randalls. No time for any more. Rob Pritchard. Yeah, nice group forming in there behind the sort of leading three machines there. Well, we say that uh, number f uh, in fourth place, number 88, Rob Lowe, uh, pulled out a bit of a gap as well as here on this uh, second lap. First into the dip and towards us here at Cross Four Ways is your race leader, number 31, Colin Croft, pulling out an even bigger advantage now. No other machines in sh sight just at the moment, but uh, here they do come. It's number 99, Sam Norton, just ahead of number 27, John Cliff. So as we saw and heard from Tim, Across the start-finish line at the end of the first lap, Sam Norton ahead of John Cliff. That's the same here again across four ways. There's number 88, Rob Lowe, just a few seconds back. We did have a big group in behind them previously. Here's number 22, that's Rod Graham, earning a little bit of ground over number 81 here. So that's good, uh, good action there for number 81, Blake Kelly as well. On the way through, looking to catch his marker in front of him. There's number 25, Andrew Guy, through cross four ways. Five bikes close together, led by number 43. So that's Dale Brew, the newcomer, holding off the advances of four others going through cross four ways at the back of that group there. It's number 94, another newcomer in Adam Randalls. That's a great little battle going on where they're concerned in the top ten. Back to you, Tim. Yeah, our leaders uh, across the uh, railway bridge. No other bike at all across that bridge. And there he is, Colin Croft, at 89.705 miles per hour. So uh, a pretty quick lap put in there. Here's two together. One's just slightly ahead of the other, but uh, 27 is closing in on 99. Sam Norton, the newcomer, still in second, but the gap was uh, around six seconds at the end of the previous lap. It's extended advantage now, 14.826 seconds. That Colin Croft, number 31, leads number 99, the newcomer Sam Norton. He, in turn, is just a fraction ahead of number 27, John Cliff, in third. In fourth is 88, Rob Lowe. Fifth is number 22, Rod Graham. In sixth, number 81, Blake Kelly, the newcomer. Three, four bikes. I was going to say in view, but they were on us, so just wanted to let us uh, hear them across the line. Fifth and 22, Rod Graham. Sixth, number 81, Blake Kelly. Seventh, number 25, Andrew Guy. Up into eighth is number 36, Andrew Jessup. Ninth is number 43, the newcomer, Dale Brew. Another newcomer in 10th, number 82, that is Stevan Radakovich. In 11th, number 20, Guy Hutton. 12th, number 94, newcomer Adam Randalls. And in 13th, number 64, and that is uh, Paul McMahon. So it is Colin Croft who's got a commanding advantage of nearly 15 seconds. Let's go to Robert Cross Four Ways.
Yeah, that battle between the second and third really continuing at the moment, but here is your race leader again approaching cross four ways. Number 31, Colin Croft in control as it stands at the moment as he heads into the tight right-hander on the way towards the run on the way towards uh, Church Benz, incidentally. So there is Colin Croft. Let's have a look at him on the exit as he roars away to the latter stages of the Cola Spillown course on this third lap. That gap is extending. One more machine interview here. It's number 27, John Cliff, up into second place here. And he's pulled out a bit of a gap here of around two to three seconds from number 99, Sam Norton here, the newcomer. So a change in the order between second and third. John Cliff up into second and having built a gap as well. Here's number 88, Rob Lowe, still running steady in fourth as well. Does he have anything left in that machine to maybe try and catch the other two there for the podium places we'll have to wait and see but at the moment uh, Sam Norton does have a nice little gap but he's behind to number 27 John Clifford moves up to second two more machines interview number 22 Rod Graham it's number 81 as well Blake Kelly just had a little look up the inside decided against it but the two could be close on the exit back to you Tim 14.8 was the advantage for the yellow fared outfit of number 31 Colin Croft at the end of uh, lap two, he's now completed three laps and the road goes pretty quiet. He's got a big, big, big advantage. Uh, bike spotted just on the uh, railway bridge as we look up the railway line. But this is a huge advantage now that Colin Croft has. 27 in second, that's John Cliff. And it's 20.9 seconds, the advantage. There's number 99, that's the newcomer Sam Norton, and he is uh, roughly 7.9 so seconds uh, back now on John Cliff, who's really put a statement in and uh, a quick lap from John Cliff there of 87.634 miles per hour. But number 31, the leader, Colin Croft, at 90.687 miles per hour. Here's some good action as 22 gets ahead of 81 as they cross the line. 22, Rod Graham in fifth position. And number 81, the newcomer, Blake Kelly, in sixth. There's number 25, Andrew Guy, across in seventh place. Number 88, Rob low is in fourth position we should say as well here's 36 across the line Andrew Jessup in eighth 82 is up to ninth place that's uh, Stevan Radikovic and in tenth place moving up is number 20 and that is Gary Hutton but it's a 20.9 advantage for Croft over Cliff let's go to cross four ways and Rob Pritchard yeah, good to see Stefan Radakovic up into the top 10 there, but uh, some big improvements there from Andrew Jessup in the previous laps, made of three places since that first lap as uh, number 60 Stuart Robinson comes through and just behind him on the road is the race leader, number 31 Colin Croft as well, so uh, just some traffic to navigate on the exit of uh, cross four ways here, there goes Colin Croft past number 60 uh, Stuart Robinson again, that machine just not quite sounding 100% but he is still certainly circulating uh, Stuart Robinson and will of course want to uh, finish this race as well, so the road does go quite quiet but already Colin Croft catching someone at the back of the order there here's number 27 John Cliff in second we'd already mentioned he'd opened up that little bit of a gap between himself and third position and that gap has got to even further at the moment Cliff already on the exit across four ways and out toward Church Benz as we uh, welcome the arrival of number 99 Sam Norton into cross four ways as well so that gap building between first and second and second and third is number 88 Rob Lowe here who could well be keeping number 99 Sam Norton honest here on the way out so as Rob Lowe might just be making up a little bit of ground there on number 99 Sam Norton back to you Tim yeah we've got uh, the second of these machines will be our race lead 105 crosses the line but there is number 31 Colin Croft four laps completed and uh, he was uh, gaining uh, there on 105 uh, Mick Morton and the road goes quiet 20 point Nine. It was more than that, actually, uh, at the end of the last lap. Uh, but this is, seems to be a, a growing ad advantage in a machine to slowing as uh, number 27 comes into view. 27.896 seconds. And I think we're going to get a retirement of that uh, machine number 60 of Stuart Robinson. It does sound a little bit rough, and his hand is up quite rightly on the, the left-hand side of the road. There's the man in third, the newcomer, number 99, Sam Norton. But here's the man in fourth, number 88, Rob Lowe. And the uh, difference between uh, 
Norton and uh, low is around about six seconds. So uh, that has tightened up a little bit there. But Colin Croft, it's an ever-increasing advantage. Nearly half a minute now he's ahead of number 27, John Cliff. So 31 from 27 in third. It's number 99, Sam Norton, a newcomer. Fourth, 88, Rob Lowe. Fifth, number 81, and moving up into fifth is the newcomer, Blake Kelly. And in sixth, number 22, Rod Graham. There's number 25, Andrew Guy, across the line. But number 60, Stuart Robson, confirmed as a retirement. Croft is acres away in the lead. Let's go out to cross four ways and Rob Pritchard. He is indeed, and what we thought previously in the early stages was the battle for second and third. Now seeing John Cliff just extend that advantage and Rob Lowe bringing up the pace, it might be the battle for the final podium place that could be the one to keep an eye on as your race leader. Number 31, Colin Croft, with that uh, enormous advantage to the rest of the field at the moment through cross four ways and on the way up to Church Bends on this uh, fifth lap as we go through. You mentioned there as well uh, Blake Kelly, number 81, making it up into fifth place. He'd actually done that by the time he'd reached cross four ways here on that previous lap, so clearly making up a lot of ground in the early stages of that last lap as well. So Blake Kelly steadily uh, moving up the field at the moment, up ahead of uh, Rod Graham there. Well, here's one of the... Uh, under the back, Nick Morton, who's just going to be overtaken by the man in second, uh, number 27, John Cliff. So John Cliff in second there with that big margin to Sam Norton, number 99, and now just ahead on the road of number 105, Mick Morton, who's still, of course, to complete the previous lap there, but still circulating on that pattern as well. Here is number 99, Sam Norton, looking forward towards uh, cross four ways here. That gap still looks to be uh, fairly substantial between himself and number 88, Rob Lowe in fourth. A good few seconds here, around four or five seconds, just by the reckoning, my own head there. But Rob Lowe still keeping him honest. Back to you, Tim. And that is our leader, Colin Croft. He uh, has uh, put that quickest lap in at the end of uh, lap three, but he's uh, now on his last lap here for this consolation race. And, well, John Cliff, how far is it? It was nearly half a minute. It's a lack of adhesion flag, just a few. Uh, we've got more blue sky than we've ever had. This is typical Isle of Man weather. Just the odd spot of uh, rain has fallen, but the roads predominantly are dry, which is great to see. And here is our man. Presumably this is him in second. It is number 27, John Clip, And it is over half a minute now. 33.838 seconds, the advantage. So uh, who's going to be in third? That's uh, the one uh, that we're keeping an eye on. One machine now comes into view. And it is uh, number 105. So that's lower down. Here is the man in third. That is number 99, Sam Norton. So uh, Mick uh, Morton has been lapped by Croft and Cliff. 88 crosses the line, Rob Lowe. And uh, that's uh, a comfortable uh, enough advantage now for the newcomer, Sam Norton, in uh, third place ahead of number 88, Rob Lowe. So just the four machines have made it to the... Uh, finish line here they're on their last lap now and colin croft will be uh, well just trying to get that machine around and he'll be listening out and uh, just hoping that uh, nothing is going to go wrong and spoil the party he'll be hearing everything as he goes around this final lap as he go to cross four ways and rob pritchard yeah, waiting for our race leader, Tim, and just a couple of speckles of rain dropping here at Cross Four Ways as well, despite looking over my shoulder with a little pocket of blue sky to come this way. Here is the race leader. It's been commanding from number 31, Colin Croft, on his way through Cross Four Ways for the final time in this Blackford uh, Consolation race. Off he goes. That gap has just uh, grown and grown as the race has gone on here. He's already overtaken a bit of traffic. This man on the way through is uh, number 43. That's one of the newcomers, Dale Brew. So Colin Croft just there uh, clearing a little bit more uh, traffic on his way through there, Dale Brew on his way towards uh, Church Bends. Now it's the the long wait, I think, to see uh, who is going to be uh, in second here by the time they make it to uh, Cross Four Ways. Another machine emerging into the dip and towards uh, Cross Four Ways. And once again, it's the number 27 outfit of John Cliff on the way through there for Cross Four Ways, the final time in uh, this race into the latter stages of this particular lap. Now we wait to see the battle between third and fourth. It might be a bit too much for fourth place Rob Lowe number 88 to try and overcome it did seem that 99 had a gap but there's no time for that it's back to tim yeah one of the uh, lower order riders crossing the line but here is our race winner number 31 colin croft 
And, uh, well, what a commanding performance that is. Winning the Blackford Consolation Race over the six laps. Total masterclass for the rest of the field to follow. He has won it by a country mile. We'll let you know who's second and third. But let's go and hear from the winner with Chris Kinley. Yeah, this will be a popular win. He's a popular man around the paddock is uh, Colin Croft. Really, really is. He's a nice guy. I'm sure Jason and all his guys who help him out uh, through the years. And they're waiting for the next guys to come. It should be John Cliff in second place. <laughs> Crofty. <laughs> There's Dave Milling over there. Give him a big thing. Hey. Come and get Mike, Bill. No. Hey, hey. <laughs> this is a first. John, Cl John Cliff is confirmed in second place. A Croft electrical contractor's on the front of his thing. We'll let him take his lid off as well. There's going to be some cider drunk going to get wet on the inside after this one, I think, my lad. Well done, Crofty. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Give us a kiss. Oh, not again. <laughs> oh, he's all sweaty and horrible. Uh, well done, mate. Yeah, no, thanks very much. It's, uh, it's a bit unusual seeing me here, isn't it? Yeah, it is normally just having a banter in the paddock. However, to be in here, you've got to get to the end, and you've got a pretty good start ahead of John there. Well, uh, to be fair, my bike's head and shoulders above yeah. everything else out there, but uh, no, I've had an absolutely awful practice, four sessions why I'm probably in this race, but uh, John went away, he was off the line quicker than me, and I just thought, right, I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that, that was it, so yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. The bike's pretty well set up then for you, I take it for, for coming up for Grand Prix and stuff? Uh, if you're doing it? Well, hopefully. Um, I'm junior, senior confirmed for, for Manx. Um, just got clutch issues. We've got it working, but it's not where it needs to be but yeah it's got me around so that'll do well done crofty cheers mate thanks good, very much good that good that made my day that good man and uh, john cliff will get john in for a quick chat if we can john congratulations yeah, good thank start you. thank you very much yeah uh, just too much for me though crofty boy there <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been cracking great great meeting always a, always a well turned now bike i was uh, saying to the listeners the other day it's always nice to the amount of interest that this gets in the paddock just hang on a second well let's get uh, young sam's might be over the way always gets a lot of interest in the paddock doesn't yeah. it Certainly does, yeah. It's my pride and joy, so it's my pension. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. well done, John. No problem, thank you very well much. Well done, buddy, cheers. And we'll just get hold of Sam wherever he's gone. All right. I'm just holding the bike here. There we go. Got it? That's it, absolutely. Unless I've word with young Sam. <laughs> That'll do a podium on your debut at Balloon. Uh, yeah, it was a bit, uh, little oily there, so my foot was burning for the last uh, couple of laps, so a bit what of a struggle. Have, what have you done to your head? Oh, there's an injury at work. I oh. got hit in the head with a bit of, bit of gas poise. Oh, dear. But then, uh, listen, it's made up for it here get, get, getting a podium at Milan first time, eh? Oh, yeah, chuffed a bit, to be honest. It was a bit disappointing yesterday. We had problems with the bike all day, so we missed a proper race. And, uh, yeah, we've ended up here, so... Big thanks to all the boys that have been helping me out. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. Cheers. All right, cheers. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, yeah. So get yourself up here to the podium. Who's doing the podium, old chap? Megan's doing the podium. Thank you very much. And Blackfords, thank you very much. So here we go, folks. In third, uh, Megan, give a round of applause for Megan for doing the presentation for Blackfords. Up you go. Uh, third, third, and second, the other side, first in the middle. There you go. In third place is number 99, Sam Norton. So there we go, Sam. Congratulations. Debut on the Balloon Circuit and getting on the podium. In second place, number 27, John Cliff. Well done, John. And a popular win, winning the consolation race number 31 is Colin Croft. <laughs> well done, Crofty. He gets himself uh, the laurel sash and he also gets a sparkling uh, wine from Forage and Vintners, which I'm sure he's going to make good use of. Well done to the top three. Thank you very much also to Megan for doing the presentation. So well done to Sam Norton, well done to John Cliff and also to Colin Croft. Well done to our top three and we'll have back to Tim to set up for the next race. Yeah, we'll just go a little bit further down. Uh, we've got the top three there. Fourth, 88, Rob Lowe. Fifth, number 22, Rod Graham. Sixth, number 81, the newcomer, Blake Kelly. Seventh, number 25, Andrew Guy. Eighth, number 82, Stevan Radakovic. Ninth, number 36, Andrew Jessup. Tenth, number 20, and that is Gary Hutton. Eleventh, number 94, uh, Adam Randalls. And... Uh, that is it for the moment. They are the ones that have uh, completed the six laps. In fact, there is the course inspection car through. So uh, that is as far as we go. So now let us move to uh, the uh, Oogly Post Classic Senior Superbike Race. The Big Machines, seven laps, 29.75 miles. 
We've got the uh, pre-95 machines are the red plates with the white numbers and 95 and 96 machines eligible. And they're the red plates with the black numbers, if you can spot that at the speeds that these guys will be going. The lap record last year, Joe Yardsley at 106.535 miles per hour. So let's give you the front row. Number one, Joe Yardsley, the defending champion, is in pole position. Ahead of, uh, well, his Manx Grand Prix rival, Marcus Simpson, number 23. And completing the front row is number 59, Mark Colvin. Second row, number five, Paul Cassidy. Number 10, Anthony Redmond. And number two, Andy Hornby. Third row is number 38, Paul Pochi Williams. Number 96, Andrew Farrell. And number 13, uh, Mikhail Ducopel. 34 is the first bike on the fourth row. That's Don Gilbert. Then it's Dennis Booth, number 26, and number 19, Tim Poole. Fifth row is number 32, Aaron Hughes. Number 83, Keith Pringle. And number 18, Michael Bampton. Sixth row, 113, Darren Creer. Number 16, Anthony Redmond. And number 100, Heffin Owen. Seventh row, 48, Mark Herbertson. 77, Neil Champion. 118, Roger Wibbley. The eighth row is 73, Dean Radcliffe. 71, Scott Wilson. And 85, Emmett Burke. Ninth row, number 57, Rob Mitchell Hill. 68 in the middle of that row is Roddy Taylor and 44 Paul Turner and two machines completing the 29 that we've got entered into this on row 10 31 Colin Croft the winner of that uh, consolation and 27 John Cliff so they're right at the uh, back of the grid not too much activity uh, here at the moment, so I've seen the course car go through uh, uh, just pre prior to that. So let's uh, just get the thoughts of uh, Rob Pritchard out there. Here's the uh, second of the course cars as well. Uh, the thoughts of uh, Rob Pritchard on what we've seen uh, so far today and what we've got in prospect here. You've got these big machines now, a full grid. What a start. We're going to have that mass start, but... Joe Yates, he's already got a win under his belt, getting the better ahead of Alan Oversby in that thrilling race earlier. Do you fancy him for a second win, doubling up here today, Rob? It's certainly, if we're going off practice and qualifying, is uh, certainly a possibility. I did wonder, just at the start of this session, because of the damp conditions that we had, we weren't entirely 100% sure that things would dry up and the track would continue to improve. But thankfully, so far, uh, touch wood, I think probably just with a bit more of a guarantee there, we have seen it dry out uh, relatively steadily throughout the course of the session. So uh, that factor of uh, maybe the damp conditions, it might still be the case, as we will always caveat in today's session as well in certain areas. But... With the track largely drying out, we could see something similar to what was happening in the practice and qualifying sessions. Just to, uh, as a bit of context again of those uh, times throughout the uh, the practice and qualifying sessions in this post-classic senior superbike. We'll go to the most recent one, the second session that took place yesterday. Joe Yerdy, the quickest time, 2 minutes 25.582, but only 2.399 seconds behind him, number 23, Marcus Simpson. 2 minutes 27.981, a best lap, and completing the front row, number 59, Mark Colvin as well, 231.056. And uh, you get the feeling that uh, whoever has the best start here will uh, certainly set them up very nicely going into this because Joe Yeardsley and Marcus Simpson have been setting the pace but never rule out that Manx contingent as five out of the six riders in the first two rows are uh, Manx riders. So they certainly know their way around here. We understand bikes are making their way forward. Over to Chris Kinley. They certainly are, and uh, one of the riders just going past me now is Joe Yardsley. He rolls his number one machine into the position. Andy Farrell's just uh, done a cardinal sin, to be fair. What he's done is he's put his hell crash mat on, or his helmet, and he's not put his earplugs in. But he's just taking his lid off there now, strapping the leathers back up again, and putting the lid back over the head. Indy the Cobbles next to him. On the number 13, S-Rad Suzuki, the 750. 
Paul Cassidy's right next to us as well. I'm sure pleased with that podium he had a little bit earlier on. Just looking to see if we can see Marcus Simpson not here in the middle front row. So it is all Manx uh, front row. Dennis Booth there, the number 26 bike. He's just rolled himself into his position. And we did just get a little skiff of rain just at the end, of the, just as that last race was just about to end. But it kind of all just dissipated quite quick. And the sun, as you quite rightly say, is trying to come out there now. Looking over, it's back towards Isle of Man Ronsway Airport. It is a blue sky just up above a little bit of it. And looking over towards my left-hand side, towards Scarlet Bull Vash. Quite high cloud there as well. So hopefully we'll get our final two races here of the Blackford Financial Services pre-TD Classic races underway in pretty short time. For those of you who are sticking around on the island or coming back for the Southern 100, I'd love to see you back here as well. Just a reminder that the Andreas Racing Association are having a two-day meeting on the Saturday and the Sunday after the Southern 100 finishes on the Thursday. So that, of course, will be in July as machines make their way out. That's the 13th and 14th of July, OK? So just keep it an eye for Marcus Simpson. Can't see him as of yet. Don't actually see him here, to be fair. So, Rob, you can obviously keep a little eye out for that one out there across four ways, but we don't see number 23, Marcus Simpson, in the middle of that front row across four ways. Yeah, that's interesting to hear that. No Marcus Simpson that Chris Kinney could see. So we'll uh, check the convoy as it comes through cross four ways in a few moments' time. Got to remember, of course, Marcus Simpson will also be preparing for the Alaman TT races as well. So whether that's a factor or not, we're not quite sure. But uh, that might just change things uh, a little bit. So the likes of uh, number 59, Mark Colvin, also on the front row, but also Paul Cassidy, Anthony Redmond and Andy Hornby on the second row might just uh, eye a little bit of a gap in the front row if indeed number 23, Marcus Simpson, isn't going to be in involved in this uh, particular race but looking a bit further back and we pointed out uh, their performances throughout uh, qualifying as well the progress they made Paul Potty Williams on the third row as well number 96 Andrew Farrell as well on that uh, 90, uh, that uh, Ducati 851 uh, the CK racing machine as well and number 13 uh, Michael Ducopel I think I heard Tim mentioning that he was a very late sign on indeed just because of uh, the way he was uh, travelling to the island of course it is a long way from uh, the Czech Republic but great to see him here as always there so making it on to the third row as well, looking a bit further back. Number 34, Don Gilbert as well, been a, a consistent performer in the, the respective classes so far. Uh, number 26, Dennis Booth. And number 19, Tim Poole up in there on the 750 Suzuki as well, uh, the man from Nottingham as well. If we're talking about Joe Yerdsley, he's on the, one of the Mistral Racing uh, Kawasaki machines and also on one of those is number 18, Michael Bampton from Olmskirk. He's in the fifth row alongside number 83, Keith Pringle, and uh, number 32, Aaron Hughes as well. We can just hear them emerging towards us. Here they come, led by the uh, travelling marshal. So let's keep an eye on this convoy. Number one, Joe Yardsley, Mark Colvin, Paul Cassidy, Andy Hornby in there, Anthony Redmond, Don Gilbert, and just looking through the rest of the field that are making their way through. Indeed, not seeing this, Darren Crear, Heffernoa, Michael Bampton, 48, 77, 44, 85 and 118, Roger Wibley, the newcomer to the class, 73, 68 and 57. So no, no Marcus Simpson in that convoy through cross four ways. So indeed, Marcus Simpson may very well be a non-starter in this race. Well spotted by Chris Kenley before, but we have not seen Marcus Simpson in that convoy coming through cross four ways. So that might just open things up a little bit more. Joe Yardsley on pole. He has that lap record. He is the defending champion. But when you look at the likes of experienced competitors like Mark Colvin, Paul Cassidy, Anthony Redmond and Andy Horn be in there. They'll all fancy themselves in uh, in this race if Joe Yerzy gets uh, anything less than a perfect start off the line as the course inspection car comes through. So that's just a little bit of a change here in terms of the uh, dynamics of this race, possibly a little bit, that we are going to have an absentee on the front row. Back to you, Tim. Yeah, and that uh, denies us, of course, having uh, Joe Yeardsley from Laxey, Marcus Simpson from Douglas and Mark Colvin from Peel on the front row. We're just going to have a double Manx front row rather than triple uh, in terms of residency here as the travelling marshal approaches and uh, a lot of weaving going on by the machines further back as they uh, try and get the heat into the tyres uh, for this mass start, which is going to be truly, truly spectacular. Joe Yeardsley, the man in pole position on that 750 ZXR Kawasaki from the Mistral Classic Race Team. The Laxey Rider Gap, of course, at two with no Marcus Simpson. And then we have 59, and that is, of course, uh, Mark Colvin on the DRF Racing ZXR 750 Kawasaki, the Peel man. 
Paul Cassidy then, number five, is on the second row. He's on a uh, David Green Racing Suzuki. Then we have number 10, Anthony Redmond. And I'm going to pause there because uh, the red flag has been uh, displayed uh, high up. And uh, just a, a final word, it's gone green now at the back of the grid. So engage gear, watch the lights now, watch the lights. Who's going to get the whole shot here? Who's getting the start? Quite a long hold. That's a belter of a start by Joe Yardsley. Everyone's safely away. Let's go to Chris Kinley. Didn't get a good start at the Royal Enfield today, but he's got a good start. 159.34, 123 as fast as that. Through. One, number one, number 59, and I think it was 54, was it, I spotted there? Gareth Arnold, possibly. Well, we'll find out after the end of the first lap, but number one got a flyer. He did indeed. Uh, it was quite a long hold uh, on the line, that uh, to what we've had uh, previously. But uh, Joe Yardsley, where you could see he was itching to go. You could almost see his eyes fixated on the lights there and uh, revving that uh, Mistral Kawasaki to get away uh, to a good start, which indeed he did. But Mark Colvin uh, from Peel has also managed to get away uh, fairly promptly as well. So, uh, well, is it going to be a, a, a benefit for Yardsley? Who's going to put the pressure on him? That's what we need to unfold in this. This is going to be quite a quick affair here. This is going to be the closest, of course, uh, to the speeds that you'll see at the uh, Southern 100. And just a reminder of the dates of that, it is Monday the 8th, the evenings of Monday the 8th, the 9th, Tuesday and Wednesday the 10th of July and the championship race day is on the 11th of July Thursday always a belter Robert Cross four ways yeah, if we get anything like the race we had in this class here 12 months ago, then we could be in for an absolute treat here. But a blinding start it was for Joe Yardsley. And here is Joe Yardsley first into cross four ways. Already pulled out a little bit of a gap to number 59, Mark Colvin in second, number five, Paul Cassidy. So that's your top three through cross four ways. Number 96, 34, number two. So Farrell doing well up against Don Gilbert there, streaming through now. There's number 26, 18, Michael Bampton dropping back a little bit. And number 77 as well. That's at Neil Champion. Number 48 holding off the advances of the three machines on the way to cross four ways as well on this opening lap here number 44 at the back of that particular group that's a uh, Paul Turner on the 750 Suzuki so Joe Yardsley the number one machine the defending champion backing up his good start here and getting through cross four ways first and with a little bit of a gap to number 59 Mark Colvin behind him who's got number five Paul Cassidy for company as well also running well in there after starting on the third row number 96 Andrew Farrell on the Ducati as well he's going strong in the mix with the likes of number 34 Don Gilbert back to you Tim their leader spotted on the bridge, the green third Kawasaki of the number one machine. It is Joe Yardsley, 2 minutes 33.3, 59, 5 and 96. Let's have a listen to them through. Just sensational. Five, Paul Cassidy is third. 96, Andrew Farrell is in fourth. The gap Yardsley has is 4.7 seconds ahead of second place, number 59, Mark Colvin. Fifth, number 34, Don Gilbert. Sixth, number two, Andy Hornby. Seventh, number 10, Anthony Redmond. Eighth, number 13, Mikel Dukoffel. Ninth, number 19, Tim Poole. Tenth, number 32, Aaron Hughes. Eleventh, number 113, Darren Creer. Twelfth, number 100, Heffin Owen. Thirteenth, number 26, Dennis Booth. Fourteenth, number 18, Michael Bampson. Fifteenth, number 77, and that is Neil Champion. But Joe Yardsley is leading by 4.7 seconds at the end of this opening lap. And Marcus Simpson didn't start with the leaving because the bike had an oil leak. That's breaking news uh, for, to give you as to why Marcus Simpson didn't start. The bike had an oil leak. So it's Yardsley by 4.7 seconds ahead of Colvin. Let's go to Robert Cross four ways. Yeah, shame to hear that for Marcus Simpson there, as you mentioned, an oil leak. Here he is, the number one machine of Joe Yerzi, the Mistral Racing Kawasaki, into cross four ways, and it looks like that gap has been extended out front here. Three machines close together, led by number 59, Mark Colvin, the number five, Paul Cassidy, and closing in behind is number 96, Andrew Farrell. That's an interesting battle. Number two, Andy Hornby, 34, Don Gilbert, 10, Anthony Redmond in that or 13, 
32 and 19 as well. So Tim Poole running well behind that group. 26, 113, Darren Creer in our number 100. Heffer no in there. Number 113, Darren Creer as number 80, Michael Bampton goes through as well. Number 48, Mark Herbertson. 113, Darren Creer has made his way up the field quite significantly from the sixth row. There's number 77, Neil Champion. 118 and 16 on the way through. And number 85 on the way to cross four ways is Emma Burke. So Joe Yardsley leading the way. There's number 68 through cross four ways as well. Joe Yardsley extending that advantage, but three in the battle for second at the moment. Back to you, Tim. And here he comes. My word, emerging over the hill. There he goes, Yardsley. 102.501 lap record, of course, 106.5. And an overtake by number 96, Andrew Farrell, up into second ahead of number 59, Mark Colvin. In fourth, number five, Paul Cassidy. Fifth, number two, up into fifth as well, Andy Hornby. Sixth, number 34, Don Gilbert. Seventh, number 10, Anthony Redmond. Eighth, number 13, Mikel de Koppel. Ninth, number 32, Aaron Hughes. And tenth, number 19, Tim Poole. But Yeardsley has an 8.6 second advantage over Andrew Farrell, who overtook number 59, Mark Colvin, right on the line here. Colvin in third, but there's a whisker between Farrell and Colvin. We gave you the top 10. 11th is 26, Dennis Booth. 12th, number 113, Darren Creer. 13th, number 100, Heffin Owen. 14th, number 18, Michael Bampton. 15th, number 48, Mark Herbertson. 16th, 77, Neil Champion. Then it's 16, Kelly Carruthers. 118, Roger Wibberley. 85, Emmett Burke. 68, Roddy Taylor. And 73, Dean Radcliffe. But it's Joe Yardsley who leads by a growing advantage. 102.501 miles per hour on lap two. He leads Farrell by 8.6 seconds. Farrell overtook Colvin here on the line uh, to get up there into uh, second place. Let's go to cross four ways, Rob. And Joe Yersley is just on the exit across four ways and on the way to Church Bends. Three machines close together. It is that number 96 machine ahead of 59, Mark Colvin, number five. Paul Cassidy, so number 96, Andrew Farrell staying in front of number two, and he Hornby goes through. There's number 32, Aaron Hughes. 13, Michael de Koppel as well, on the way to cross four ways, pulling out a little bit of a gap to number 26, Dennis Booth, on the 750, Kawasaki, on the way through cross four ways as well. So Joey Ersley extending the advantage, number 113, Darren Creer just ahead of number 100. FNO, a nice little duel going on there further down the order at the moment. Number 18, Michael Bampton holding off the advance to number 48, Mark Herbertson. But Joe Yardsley extending that advantage again across four ways. And in that intense battle for second, it is number 96, Andrew Farrell, still leading the way. Back to you, Tim. And here he is, Yardsley. End of lap three of seven, crosses the line. 102.871 miles per hour. That's his quickest so far this afternoon. And uh, yeah, two, three, three interview now in this battle for second. Who is it? It's still number 96, Andrew Farrell, who's ahead of number 59, Mark Colvin. But number five, Paul Cassidy, nipping at the heels and thinking, I want a podium here as well. He's joined the party for second, third and fourth. Up into fifth place now is number 34, Don Gilbert. The advantage, though, that Yardsley has is 12 and a half seconds, 12.505 seconds to be, advan uh, to be exact. Great racing lower down there between 48, Mark Herbertson in 13th and 14th place, number 18, Michael Bampton. So it's uh, Don Gilbert in 5th, number 34, 6th, number 2, Andy Hornby, 7th, number 10, Anthony Redmond, 8th, number 32, Aaron Hughes, Ninth now is number 13, Mikel de Koppel, 10th, number 26, Dennis Booth, 11th, number 113, Darren Creer, 12th, number 100, Heffin Owen, then there's Herbertson and Bampton in 13th and 14th, 15th is number 16, Kelly Carruthers, and up into 16th is Roger Wibberley. Yardsley, 12 and a half seconds ahead. Let's go out to Rob. There we could just see that Mistral Racing fairing the distinctive green and red on its way through the number one machine of Joe Yardsley into cross four ways again here on this fourth lap here, still extending 
that advantage out to the front. He just seems to be eating into the times towards his current lap record base at the moment. Still some way off. Here come those three battling for second. It's number 96, Andrew Farrell, and at number 59, Mark Colvin, and number five, Paul Cassidy. Still virtually nothing separate in that trio. 34, Don Gilbert, Andy Hornby, Anthony Redman moving up the inside there as number 32, Aaron Hughes goes through. Number 13, Michael de Koppel. Great manoeuvres there, and it Michael back on the way through. Number 26, Dennis Booth on the way through cross four ways as well. Now a bit of a gap to the rest of the field in behind at the moment, but Joe Yardsley still extending that advantage and Farrell still holding off the advances in second of Colvin and Cassidy. Darren Creer with Hef and Owen for company there. That battle's still going on as well. Number 48, Mark Herbertson, a couple of bite lengths ahead of Michael Bampton to you, Tim. And here he is, Joe Yardsley, end of lap four, crosses the line now. Still lap three, his quickest, 102.871. There's no need for him to uh, really put the hammer down. He's not under pressure. Three bikes emerge. It's still Farrell, I think. Farrell ahead of Colvin and Cassidy. And there is less than a second between those three bikes. Fourth, number five, Paul Cassidy. Fifth, then, is 34, Don Gilbert. Sixth, number two, Andy Hornby. Seventh, number 10, Anthony Redmond. Eighth, number 32, Aaron Hughes. Ninth, number 13, Michael de Koppel. And tenth, number 26, Dennis Boo. 14.487 seconds. The advantage Yardsley has over, well, let's face it, Farrell, Colvin and Cassidy. And, uh, well, his quickest time, quickest uh, lap... Time-wise, that 102.871 miles per hour is 2 minutes 28.730 seconds to cover the four and a quarter miles round uh, this well, Colas Balang course. That's number 16 crossing the line, Kelly Carruthers. We got down to, I think, uh, Dennis Boo. Darren Creer is in 11th, number 113. 12th, number 100, Heffin Owen. Then it's Mark Herbertson, Michael Bampton, Kelly Carruthers and Roger Wibberley. Yardsley's out in front. It's close for the rest of the podiums. Rob Pritchard. It really is indeed, as Joe Yardsley hoves into view again here at uh, Cross Four Ways and uh, still well out front there. Like you said, maybe just drop it off the uh, pace a little. Probably knows the advantage that he already has as he heads on the exit across Four Ways up towards uh, Church Benz a little bit down the road as well. So maybe just a little bit of a knowledge of the gap. Here is that battle for second. It's Andrew Farrell and up the outside. Paul Cassidy around the outside from Farrell, from Colvin, as Cassidy held it onto second place. Has he got it on the exit? Looks like he has. Cassidy up to second. There's Hornby, Aaron Hughes, Anthony Redmond, number 10, 13, Michael de Koppel, number 34, Don Gilbert. So across four ways as number 26, Dennis Booth comes through. Paul Cassidy, great manoeuvre around the outside on that left-hand side, around Farrell there, Andrew Farrell. Paul Cassidy up to second, ahead of Farrell, but with Mark Colvin, number 59, still in very close attendance indeed. Still extremely close for those podium places. To you, Tim. Yeah, coming to the end of uh, lap five, and here he is, the Laxey man. Joe Yardsley crosses. And, uh, well, what sort of advantage? Is it a growing advantage? More bikes just seen on the bridge. Who is it going to be in second, third, and fourth? It stayed constant here, but uh, are we going to have a, a new man uh, in uh, second place? We are indeed. It is Paul Cassidy, and he's ahead of Andrew Farrell now in third, and Mark Colvin down in fourth. Here's two together. Oh, great battle there. Andy Hornby is now up, number two into fifth. Sixth is number 32, Aaron Hughes. 16.393 seconds the advantage Yardsley has over Paul Cassidy. But a great battle it is between bikes numbers 5, 96 and 59 for the set of two podium places, assuming that Yardsley goes on to win. Cassidy, Farrell and Colvin having a right ding-dong there. So it's Hornby in fifth. Sixth is Aaron Hughes. Seventh, number 10, Anthony Redmond. Great battle by Hef and Owen and Mark Herbertson there as for 11th and 12th places further down the order. Seventh, Redmond. Eighth is number 13, Mikel de Koppel. Ninth, number 34, Don Gilbert. Tenth, number 26, Dennis Booth. Then it's Owen and Herbertson. Then we've had 113 in 13th, Darren Creer. Fourteenth, number 18, Michael Bampton. Yardsley, 16.3 ahead of the battling trio for the podiums. Let's go to Rob. You yeah, mentioned that a little further down, Mark Herbertson catching both Darren Creer and Heffern Owen. Here's the race leader again, Joe Yardsley, into cross four ways here. Maybe just a bit of knowledge of that gap, so uh, we're just not feeling.
feel the need to take uh, too many liberties going through the corners at this point. But uh, yeah, Mark Herbertson before TA started uh, well down, didn't have the best of starts, but catching those in front of him. And now with some daylight here, number five, Paul Cassidy in second, made a break for it from number 96, Andrew Farrell. And number 59, Mark Colvin. So Paul Cassidy eking out that advantage in second now. Number two, Andy Hornby. There's number 32, Aaron Hughes. Up the inside, past number 10, Anthony Redmond. Michael De Koppel on the way through now, across four ways. Number 34, Don Gilbert, who's dropped back at number 26, Dennis Booster. Joe Yerdy still out in front, but Paul Cassidy, who moved up into second here the last time through cross four ways, now has just that little bit of extra room between himself and number 96, Andrew Farrell, in third. Back to you, Tim. Top 10 have all gone over 100 miles an hour, and here's the first of that top 10. Number one, Joe Yardsley. He's done 102.871 on lap three. Cassidy, last lap, 101.740. Remember, the gap was uh, over 16 seconds. What's it going to be as they head out onto their last lap? Here's the man in second place, and it is Cassidy, and it's 18 seconds. There's Farrell across the line and Colvin. And here's three together. That was fifth, number two, Andy Hornby. Sixth, number 32, Aaron Hughes. Seventh, number 10, Anthony Redman. Eighth, number 13, Mikel de Koppel. Then it's Gilbert and Booth, 34 and 26, completing ninth and 10th places. So uh, Colvin, fourth place, number 59. He put his quickest lap in of 100. 0.457 on lap six. Hornby also quickest at 100.076 miles per hour. And also, uh, in fact, it wasn't, it was uh, Redmond who was quickest uh, on lap six at 100.132. And Dennis Booth put his quickest lap in and uh, Booth put in 100.336, but it's Yardsley by 18.1 seconds ahead of Cassidy. Cassidy's uh, just a little bit ahead now of uh, Farrell and Colvin, but not comfortably. Let's go out for the last time in this race. It's Cross Four Ways and Rob Pritchard. Yeah, you can just hear in the background, that's number 57, Rob Mitchell Hill making his way through. There's your race leader, commanding performance at the moment by number one, Joe Yardsley, who's just uh, navigating some traffic as well, because that's the sound of number 44, Paul Turner as well. So Joe Yardsley just catching up with some of the riders lower down the order on this final lap, but the lead still commanding here. And that is the number five machine of Paul Cassidy. He has stretched that advantage in second. He's in total control of second place at the moment. Here's number 96, Andrew Farrell. Mark Colvin, number 59, still in close attendance. Number 32, Aaron Hughes moving up ahead of number two, Andy Hornby, and number 10, Anthony Redmond there. So that's Aaron Hughes moving up into fifth place across four ways here. Three more machines. 34, Don Gilbert ahead, number 26, Dennis Booth, and number 13, Michael de Koppel as well. That trio close together. Back to you, Tim. Yeah, we don't want to miss this uh, finish here. We're going to see our, uh, it's one of the lower order riders just crossing the line there, number 57. But here is our race winner. It's the Laxi Man. Start to finish victory for Joe Yardsley in the Oogly Post Classic Senior Superbike race. Back to back wins 23 and 24 the years he's managed it. And a third victory at the Pre TT Classic. Let's go down to Chris Kinley as Cassidy crosses in second and is delighted. Chris Kinley. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see who gets that third position as well, but here he is. Chris Palmer straight on to him. Just having a look at the rear tyre straight away. But well done to Paul Cassidy getting that second place. Who's going to be confirmed in third? Oh, Andy, Andy Farrell from the Scaries. Wow, that's brilliant. He's got that. Shame for local man Mark Colvin. It's not him. It's not him. It's 96. So they all come in. So there we go. So it's first for for Yardsley, second for Cassidy, who actually wins the prize for being the first pre-94 bike home as well. And then well done to Andy Farrell. You can hear that Ducati there as well. Let's let Joe just take a little bit of fluid in. And uh, he was straight over a look at your rear tyre was Palmy, you know. <laughs> oh, it shouldn't be too bad. No, it's all right. It seemed to me you weren't revving it out. You knew what you were doing, didn't you? I had a roast dinner in the side this afternoon <laughs> and I couldn't go any faster. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, you know, with, with the TT tomorrow, I've been really nervous this week, and I'm not going to lie, in the in the tricky conditions, it's so easy to slip off, and especially in this morning's race. So, 
I just wanted to get through it, you know, and uh, just do what I, literally the bare minimum I had to do and just, just ride safe and enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, the big thanks to the Mistral Classic Race team for providing me with such an amazing bike. And it's our second year riding for these guys now, and they put so much effort into it. So it's lovely to give them back something in return. You won this race last year on this bike. How much has it changed them last year? Anything at all? Just development? Yeah, they've done a bit over the winter on the engine, but... Um, the bike is the same as, as, as what we left it. Once we got it set up round here last year, we just used it the same at Scarborough, and uh, I just feel so at home on this bike, unlike the Enfield and stuff. It's it's a big learning curve for me this weekend on such a classic bike, but this is a bike that I really feel at home on, so it's nice to get back out and get a result for the guys and the team. Well done, Joe. Thank you. Good man, well done. Good luck for TT as well, well done. And there's a uh, big Dale is here. Well done, Joe. And Paul Cassidy's here again. Cass, well done, mate. Gavin Brown's been walking around. He's like he's like a bear with a with a, with a sore head. He's been get home, get home, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a great ride. That to be honest with you, hard work against the Kawasaki. And I think it's the Katy, is it? Yeah. They just had that much power, so I was quicker on the corners. I knew it was quicker on the corners. And when he went past me on the straight, I just had to outbreak and coming into uh, Castletown on the the bridge there. And then just knew I had to make a break then, and then I was all right, as long as I could get away. But, yeah, it was hard work. Good stuff, though. Good podium, and uh, well done to uh, Joe for winning. And Mark in here, too, and I tell you, that is quick, isn't it, that thing? Yeah, you know, yeah. the guy is a, a missile in a straight line, to be honest with you. But it's nice to see so many Manx lads on this, this podium here. Doesn't normally happen. Ready for tomorrow? Yeah, looking forward to it. I've got loads to do tonight, and then come back down to the presentation, get back up there. I'll be there till 11, 12 o'clock tonight, getting ready. Well done, Cass. Cheers, mate. Thank Cheers, you. Mucker. Well done, thank you. So just give us the top three again, Tim, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, the uh, screen has just uh, gone blank uh, there. Joe oh, Yates okay, is winning. Right. Paul Cassidy second. And Andrew Farrell yeah. is uh, confirmed in third. OK, let's give a word uh, with Andrew. Good to see you, big lad. All right, yeah. <laughs> I presume I came towards you. Yeah, yeah, no third, yeah, third year, absolutely. Yeah, on, on the Ducati, well done. Yeah, it was uh, interesting. I'm just getting to learn that bike. And the course again. He's not been here a long course. time. Yeah, yeah. D Started to flow, I'm still not camping in a few of the corners, but like I didn't even realise I was in the run for a podium there, to be honest with you, I was just having a bit of crack. Um, a couple of boys went by me, I don't know who that last in the Suzuki he went by me, and I was oh, I can't. Remember the guy in the North East who was flying through the air? Oh, yeah, yeah. That Tim Cassidy, yeah. yeah. Evil can evil, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, fair play to him, he's flying, obviously, the track knowledge here is everything, you know, and I just had to show the track a little bit of respect and get around it safe, you know. Uh, it did start peeing oil out of my boot like a good Ducati would. <laughs> um, but now I loved it, you know, it's, uh, thank God for a dry race, because I wasn't looking forward to going out there for yeah. as wet, you know, to be honest. Um, great race, great cars, great people around here, I love it. Thanks Andy, thanks for your time. Cheers buddy. Cheers man, cheers, thank you very much for that. And uh, Mark Colvin's up there as well, so Mark finishing up fourth place. So there we go. Maybe grab a quick word with him if we can, just a very, very quick word with young Master Colvin. Is that Dale Fordham actually smiling down there? I think so. First think time so. for a while. That, isn't it? How was that? Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's hard work, hot like. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. and Cass and Andy Farrell having a good battle. Yeah. Once Paul got past, he sort of left us, and then it was just me and Andy going at it. So, yeah, it's good. Good fun. Well done. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Thank you very much for that. So, there we go, folks. So, the first three in the race is well done well third position actually is actually Andy Farrell who's actually third so he's over the other You've, oh, oh we moved it all round have you he's the post 94 right okay all right he's post 94 and right okay ladies and gentlemen give a round of applause for the guys from Ugly for pre pre doing the presentation and the gentleman's name is Alan Morris. Alan Morris thank you Alan cheers thanks guys good stuff well done to Mark Colvin give Mark Colvin a round of applause Nice see you, Mark, on the podium. Well done to Andy Farrell from the Scaries as well. Well done, Andy, on the Ducati. And the race winner, doing the double last year's winner, Joe Yardsley. <laughs> well done, Tim, so they get the sparkling wine as well. So well done to the, the little one, get to the lift up on the podium, big smiley face. I don't think the little one's going to want that bottle. Well, not that bottle, anyway. So, well done to the top three. Well done to Mark. Well done to Andy. And well done to Joe Yardsley once more. And well done to Paul Cassidy. Yeah, we get Paul yep. Okay. And we'll get Paul up as well on his podium. So, well, there's the top four in this. We've got side cars to come in a minute as well. So, we'll do the... Um, the podium for that in a second. I think we're going to be a couple of minutes, Tim. I think you rattled through all the results that you could, didn't you? So, yeah, we're just waiting for Paul Cassidy to get up there as well. So, yeah, well done to Mark. So, two Kawasaki's and a Ducati on the top step. So, well done to Farrell. Nice to see Andy back. And um, 
And so we can get the Irish racing down at the south of the border back going again. I know they are doing something down there around the Skerries area, around uh, the Killer Lane sort of meeting, I think it is, doing something down there. I'll get the exact details and give that out uh, over the, the TT Festival. So well done to Joe, well done to Mark, and also well done to the guys at Ugly & Co for sponsoring the Post Classic Superbikes. Well done to Joe. Not as quick as last year. Obviously, the front three last year were really, really pushed hard, weren't they? Uh, Jamie Coward, Mike Hose and there, Paul Jordan all had a pretty good battle with uh, Joe Yerdsy taking that win. So we're just waiting for... Paul's machine to be pushed forward. We've got one more presentation to do. So we'll get the bikes off the podium and get Paul Cassidy up because a, a separate award there is for the uh, pre-90, what is it, pre-95 machines. And there we go. So there we go. Paul Cassidy will be getting that. And he jumps on that machine. And I think we're just starting to see the sidecars move forward. So I think we are going to have to hand to Tim to be able to uh, get, get the sidecars out in a minute. So... We are going to have to go back to Tim, unfortunately, because we've got the sidecars coming. George says that's fine. He's he's the boss. Tim, over to you. Let's get the sidecars set. Yeah, they're uh, not hanging around, so we're going to get our second sidecar outing uh, of the day because uh, they uh, started off proceedings uh, this afternoon and they're going to end proceedings uh, uh, some four hours or so later. On pole will be, uh, well, bearing in mind, hopefully there's been no mechanical issues in the interim since they were out earlier, but on pole will be number five, the uh, winners of the uh, first race. That is uh, Jack Griswood and Alice Smith for this three-wheeling sponsored event. Second row will be Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves, outfit number 11 and 55, Mike Bellaby and Dave Gristwood. It was the Gristwoods to the four in the first contest. 69, Greg Lambert and Andrew Haynes are on the third row. Fourth row is number two, Tony Thurkle and William Morley. And number 71, James Blackmore and Trevor Johnson. Fifth row, we have uh, Mike Cookson and Kenny Cole. And the sixth row, we had Adam Cope and John Christopher. And Steve Brooks and Sam Hersbrook. And, of course, we also had them. We didn't have them down on the uh, the grid sheet, and it's the same grid sheet that we've got from the first race, but we did have an additional starter there in Kenny Howells and Jordan Forrest. And the sidecars are now coming forward for our final action at the Blackford Financial Services pre-TT Classic Races, the three-wheeling sidecar Classic Race 2, Chris Kinley. Thank you very much, yeah, just had a, a big thumbs up from uh, from Kenny Howells and his uh, passenger. Uh, you've got race nine in your programme, but if you go back to race four, you'll find out that Kenny Howells' passenger is Jordan Forrest. So it's Jordan Forrest in the chair. It does say TBC or to be confirmed on race two, but it is Jordan Forrest that is in the chair. So winning the, in the first race, as Tim said, Jack Griswood and Alice, 55, Mike Bellamy, Dave Griswood in second, and, of course, Tony Thurkle with another podium here, William Morley in the chair. We have got number seven, just rolled up here as well. Didn't finish in the first one. Also, not finishing in the first one was number 69, Greg Lambert. He's there with Andy Haynes. And their machines are now on. Oh, about to head out onto the circuit. And the two Suzuki's at the back once again, three and seven. Kenny just clearing that one out. So that is it. Machines are on the way for the final race of the meeting. In uh, pretty, to be said, the best conditions we've had all day. Out to cross four ways we will go for Rob for the warm-up lap for the final race. Yeah, indeed, the best conditions we've had because what we think we've also noticed is not just the uh, sun making a bit of an appearance, but the temperature has gone up here. So the uh, track down in front of us looking almost bone dry by the time that we're getting this race underway. So we've already gone through the order of the opening race of what happened this morning. It was Jack Griswold and Anna Smith that took victory in the four lap contest, and uh, Mike Bellaby and Dave Griswold in second. They were 3.154 seconds off the pace of Jack Griswold and Alice Smith. Then there was a bit of a gap to number two, Tony Thurkle and William Morley, 15 and a half seconds but only 0.3 behind them number 11 Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves and of course that number 11 outfit of Quirk and Reeves uh, second on the grid going into this one as well so if they can get a good start ahead of number 55 Mike Bellaby and Dave Griswood in this particular race as well that might just uh, change things up a little bit we mentioned uh, number three uh, Kenny Howells and Jordan Forrest starting from the back a late entry into the first race earlier today they made up some serious ground to finish fifth as well still a bit of a way back 
though from uh, Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves there but still nevertheless a good outing given the fact that they were uh, effectively a late entry into the race as well we could just hear the noise in the distance so they'll be making their way past Bala Whetstone for the final time here at the 2024 Pre-TT Classic Road Races just hear them in the distance there but uh, yeah temperatures and conditions have massively improved as the traveling marshal makes their way towards us one outfit out front of this convoy is jack griswood and alice smith on pole and winners in the first race then number 55 mike bellaby and dave griswood second in the last race and number 11 Danny work and sharon reeves number two Tony Thurkle and William Murray, number 69, Greg Labber and Andrew Haynes, a retirement on the first lap in the last race. Number 71, James Blackmore and Trevor Johnson on the wind limp as well. And then two more machines in the distance. There is that uh, Westlake uh, Triton of uh, number nine, Adam Pope and John Christopher. Number three, Kenny Howells on the way in as well as his number eight, Mike Cookson and Kenny, Hull, Kenny Cole on the BMW, the 750. So it'll be interesting to see how that number 11 outfit copes in that second position off the start line we've already seen the pace of uh, Jack Griswood and Alice Smith but also that of Mike Bellaby and Dave Griswood as well number 69 Greg Lambert and Andrew Haynes after has already been previously mentioned a retirement in the previous race will be hoping for a little better as the remaining machine comes through number 7 Steve Brooks and Sam Hersbrook followed by the travelling marshals and the course inspection car so the final sighting lap of the 2024 pre-TT make its way to Tim Glover yeah, isn't it great that the uh, sidecars, uh, they would have had some dreadful conditions last night. They've had much improved conditions, uh, albeit not ideal, uh, at the start of action today. And they did start the whole session today. And they are getting the best conditions of the whole of the racing side of the meeting. We had far better conditions in practice, but they've got uh, the best of the day. So uh, really good news for this three-wheeling sidecar classic race two. It is race nine, the final race as well of the 2024 Blackford Financial Services pre-TT classic road race meeting. And there is our pole sitter, number five, Jack Griswood and Alice Smith. Then we have number 11, Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves and 55, uh, Mike Bellaby and Dave Griswood. And we uh, just waiting the fact there they are i think number 69 greg lambert and andrew haynes are there so uh just looking uh, towards the uh, back of the grid one more outfit yes here it is over the hill now i just thought there was one missing at the back and indeed uh, that outfit now uh, just making its way uh, forward and uh, just trying to see it is number two no, it's number three at the back of the grid. Kenny Howells and uh, Jordan Forrest. Red flags displayed. We should see the green flag go up now. We do. Engage the gears. There go the revs. Watching the lights, all the competitors. We're about to get underway. Revs are up. Good start by five. And a good start on the inside as well by Steve Brooks and Sam Hersbrook. Down to Chris Kinley. There were three abreast coming through on the first run of this, but it's number five from number 11. And then, oh, and then I think it's number two. Yeah, it is two, then 55. So they were, they were quite, that, in fact, that was quite tame for them, but a great start again for the first leg winner, Jack Griswood and Alice Smith. Yeah, problems for outfit number three, Kenny Howells and Jordan Forrest. Uh, Chris, uh, they are limping their way down. I'm not sure if they've got started. I think they have just got things started. So are they going to pull in or continue? But they had awful difficulty here uh, getting away on the start line. And they are continuing. They have got their uh, engine underway. And the travelling marshals now... Uh, they go out to their positions on the course. The course car goes past us as well. But, yeah, real issue for Kenny Howells and Jordan Forrest. And, uh, well, Chris didn't have to uh, describe three sidecars heading towards Balakagan this time because it was a pretty clean start by the winners of the opening race, uh, Jack Gristwood and Alice Smith. So they will uh, be heading uh, through Iron Gate and uh, Bala Norris, where, of course, the uh, gates open there. Joey's Gate, as it's affectionately known. And then they will go round Bala Bay Hairpin, along Duck Street. Got the riding stables, of course, at Bala Whetstone. Down through Williams Corner. 
past the entrance and the bomb hole as it is known there at Gellings Farm and I'll go past uh, uh, the Balang Dip and uh, out uh, into the site of Rob Pritchard very shortly past Maggie's Cottage one of the landmarks as well Rob over to you yeah, here we go. The first lap of the final race of the 2024 Blackford Financial Services Pre-TT Classic. Three machines coming into view, led by number five, Jack Griswold and Alice Smith right on their tail. Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves, number 11, number two. Thurkel and Morley, good start for them. 55 and 71, all the way through, number 69. Greg Lambert and Andy Haynes just in behind, number 71. James Blackmore and Trevor Johnson there. Great battle towards the back there. But number five, Jack Griswold and Alice Smith leading through cross four ways from number 11, Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves. Here's the number eight machine of uh, Mike Cookson and Kenny Cole on the way through cross four ways, followed just a few seconds back by number nine. That's Adam Pope and John Christopher, but it's all very tightly contested up towards the front. We heard that Tony Thurkle and William Morley, the number two outfit, had had a good start off the line, and they're right in the mix with the number 11 and number five crews up at the front as well. So it's all to play for at the front of this opening lap through cross four ways. They have got going. There is number three. It is Kenny Howes and Jordan Forrest. So they have got themselves away a little bit behind the field, but they're through cross four ways and on their way up to Church Bend. So this could be an interesting battle at the end of the first lap at the front. Back to you, Tim. Well, it's great that number three has got going, but two machines into view, and the lead is held by number five from 11. From two, 55, just uh, nosing up into fourth place, they have a 71, and there's 69, Greg Lambert. So it is outfit number five, Jack Gristwood and Alice Smith, that lead by 0.886 of a second ahead of number 11, Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves, the newcomer passenger. In third, it's number two, and number two, of course, is Tony Thurkle and William Morley. Next outfit uh, into view is number eight across the line in seventh position for number eight, Mike Cookson and Kenny Cole. Fourth place is 55, second in the first race, of course. And 55 is uh, Mike Bellaby and Dave Griswood. Just through there in eighth position is number nine, Adam Pope and John Christopher. Uh, the lads uh, there from Chorley on that uh, Westlake Triton. But it is uh, outfit number one that has the advantage. Outfit one by 0 0.886. It's Gristwood and Smith ahead of number 11, number 11 being Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves in third place, and they're about two seconds back on second, Tony Thurkle and William Morley, and in fourth place, number 55, uh, Mike Bellaby and Dave Griswood. They finish second in the race one. Then it's in fifth place, number 71, Jack Black, uh, James Blackmore and Trevor Johnson. Sixth is number 69, Greg Lambert and Andrew Haynes. Seventh, number eight, and that is uh, Mike Cookson and Kenny Cole. Ninth, uh, eighth place is number nine, number nine being Adam Pope and John Christopher. Let's go out to Cross Four Ways and Rob Pritchard. Second lap here and two machines still close together, still led by number five, Jack Griswold and Alice Smith ahead of number 11. Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves definitely keeping them honest, but they've opened a bit of a gap to number two, third column Morley in third. Number 71, Blackmore getting ahead of Bellaby and Dave Griswold there. Number 69, Greg Lambert and Andrew Haynes keeping them honest as well. Just in behind them, that uh, trio of machines on the way, all the way up towards Church Bends. So, number five, Jack Griswold and Alice Smith still leading the way, but extremely close company to them. Number 11, Danny Quirk and Sharon Aaron Reeves as well. So that looks like a battle that's going to be ongoing, barring any mechanical issues for either of those outfits. They've pulled a little bit away, Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves, from number two, Tony Thurkle and William Morley as well. And they, in turn, have managed to keep themselves uh, out in front as well of uh, the advancing number 71, James Blackmore as well, approaching cross four ways now. Number eight, Mike Cookson and Kenny Cole here, some way behind that trio that we just mentioned before. They've got around ooh, somewhere between uh, six, seven, five, maybe ten seconds from number nine Adam Pope and John Christopher approaching cross four ways now but it is Jack Westwood and Alice Smith still leading the way but Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves Sharon Reeves I should say still keeping close company to them back to you Tim yeah leaders just cross the line new leaders number 11 and got themselves ahead of number five Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves lead number five 
And number five is Jack Grisford and Alice Smith by 0.155 of a second. 0.155 in third. And they're a further 4.2 seconds back is Tony Thurkel, outfit number two, and William Morley. And they are in turn two seconds ahead of fourth place, number 71, James Blackmore and Trevor Johnson. In fifth place, we have uh, number 55, uh, Mike Bellaby and Dave Griswood. And in sixth place, number 69, Greg Lambert and Andrew Haynes. But new leaders at the halfway stage of this four-lap uh, three-wheeling sidecar classic race two. And it is Danny Quirk and the newcomer passenger, Sharon Reeves, who've got themselves into the lead, albeit narrowly ahead of the winners of race one, Jack Griswood and Alice Smith. Also through there, outfit eight, Mike Cookson and Kenny Cole. And there they are, Adam Pope and John Christopher, outfit nine. They're through in eighth place and uh, caning on them. That's that awful start in ninth. Number three, Kenny Howells and Jordan Forrest. But it is all changed at the front. Danny Quirk and newcomer passenger Sharon Rees have got the advantage at the halfway stage. 85.771 miles per hour on that lap, as opposed to the outfit five, of uh, Gristwood and Smith, 85.274. Let's go to cross four ways and Rob Pritchard. Yeah, all to play for out front, and it's Jack Griswold and Alice Smith that have got their noses in front again. Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeves just taking a little bit of a look here at uh, cross four ways. Who's got it on the exit? It looks like Griswold and Smith have held it. Here's number two. Thurkle and Morley on the way through, still a couple of seconds back, but those two machines really scrapping at the front for supremacy. Number 71, James Blackmore and Trevor Johnson on the way through cross four ways here as well. Uh, going over to Tim. Yeah, we have um, a red flag being displayed here on the start-finish line. A red flag is being displayed on the start-finish line here. So uh, this race will uh, come to a halt. So uh, a red flag, just to interrupt things there, at Cross Four Ways is being displayed here at the start-finish line. So uh, we will uh, just see exactly what uh, is happening. Uh, we were uh, two laps into this four-lap event, so um, as soon as we hear anything uh, from the race organisers, obviously they've got a job to do now to deal with whatever the incident is uh, around the course. But a red flag is being displayed on the start-finish line. Uh, and as soon as we know any more, uh, we will let you know. Uh, but in the meantime, I think we'll just hand it back for, uh, until we get any more news, hand it back to Broadcasting House. Manx Radio 1368, the best biking station in the world. Brought to you by Kawasaki Insurance. Yes, welcome back to uh, the Colas Balloon circuit for uh, the end as it is now of the Blackford Financial Services pre-TT Classic Road races. Uh, there has been uh, an incident at Balabeg. We're told that uh, everybody is uh, OK, uh, but there's a lot of oil down. They are going to need to get a sweeper. So that is it. Um, it was uh, past uh, half distance. Uh, we haven't had confirmation on any winners, uh, but uh, at half distance it was uh, bike uh, outfit number 11 that was uh, leading. And of course, uh, there is the option to declare that as a result. Danny Quirk and Sharon Reeds. But an incident at Balabeg. People are OK, we're hearing, which is good news to hear. But a lot of oil down, unfortunately. Uh, so a sweeper will be required. Uh, that's going to be needed to be cleared up so uh, bear in mind that the roads do remain closed until the roads open car has gone past there will be a delay until that actually does happen so we will wrap things up here uh, with uh, well a roundup of what we've had of course uh, race one uh, yesterday uh, the singles we had first wins for will loader and andy hunt but it was uh, girl power on the podium as well an historic podium it was congratulations to shelly pike and angela Cragg. we had a first win for andy hornby in the 1100 race a third win in the junior superbike for reese hardesty uh, the sidecar race one was won by Jack Gristwood and Alice Smith. We don't yet have a result for race two, uh, confirmed or officially uh, verified in any case. The senior, we had Joe Yeardsley in an absolute belter getting ahead of Alan Obersby. 
eight zero seconds the 18th closest finish we've ever seen in all the history of racing down here in the south of the uh, island that was the highlight uh, of uh, the racing but we also had a record-breaking win by dan sale in the one two fives with richard ford winning the 250 the three, uh, 350 junior Will Loader managed to double up uh, for the win. And the consolation, a very popular win for Colin Croft. And the post-classic superbike Joe Yeardsley for the second year running took the chequered flag. And it's three wins now at the pre-TT for him. Well, there are a lot of thanks, of course, at the uh, end uh, of a, a race meeting like this to give. And the first, of course, is to the Manx public uh, for allowing the roads to be closed and putting up with uh, the inconvenience. And we uh, doff our caps to you and thank you. Thank you to the spectators. Thank you, obviously, to the competitors who are putting on an absolutely stellar show for us. To the sponsors, without whom it couldn't happen. The Sudden Hundred Club for all the work they do. The clerk of the course, Charles Olly. We thank him as well for keeping us informed and the race organising team. To the marshals, to the scrutineers, to all the volunteers and people who just make this happen. The caterers, Trish and the team here at the start-finish line, the team at the clubhouse and, of course, around the course in the mobile units. And a thanks as well to Phil Edge for all his work with the media. To the Manx Radio Motorsport team, the producers Alex Brinley, Beth Espy, Simon Quine and Ben Hartley. Our engineers Ed Rickson and Matty Cunningham and my fellow commentators Rob Pritchard and Chris Kinley. We will be back with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Southern 100 on the evenings of the 8th, 9th and 10th of July and for the big championship race day on Thursday the 11th of July. For the final time at this year's Blackford's Financial Services pre-TT Classic Road Racers, stay safe and enjoy the next two weeks. I'm Tim Glover. Let's hand back to Broadcasting House.